Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here, back with yet another 100% achievement guide, and this time we are getting it all in Norco, an excellent point and click adventure developed by Geography of Robots, published by Raw Fury, and is usually available for £12.49 slash $14.99, but it's free right now if you have, of course, the old Xbox or game Passeroni, Pepperoni. So this is, as I said, a text-based point and click adventure, which sees our hero Kay having to go and find our brother Blake, who has mysteriously disappeared after your mother's untimely demise. How about that for a slice of double agony? Uh, the game may seem straightforward, however the achievements are not as straightforward. They're easy enough, but what you have to do, you have to do some manual saving and reloading in quite a good few places. Plus making sure to do certain things first and in a particular order, etc. I of course will let you know when, we, when and where we get there, to, uh, so we can avoid any specific sticky achievement situations. But overall, this should only take you around between three to four hours. So with that being said then, let us begin. And obviously, it's, it's going to be one of those that you should, I mean in terms of controls and everything, you should get used to fairly quickly, but I will tell you uh, exactly what you need to do. You can press the right bumper to go into your right hand side map. Um, or the right hand side, you'll see anyway. But basically, as we begin, uh, you can pick any dialogue options you want, so just keep spamming the A button. Um, now, instead of moving your cursor over absolutely everything, what you can do, for whenever any text dialogue comes up like that, you can just press up or down on the D-pad, so you can make an instant choice. Um, what you will have is a... In fact, you've got two maps. So you'll, you'll have a world map, which if you press the right bumper, you can go onto the world map on the right hand side, or a local map, is which is usually in the bottom right hand corner. And you can just, inst again, instead of moving your cursor over everything, you can just press the right trigger and that'll sift through each location on your local map. Uh, so there's just a few easy things that I found out about 10 minutes into the game. Um, uh, but as I said, for now, all you're doing is just spamming through the dialogue again. Just keep spamming uh, with the A button, of course. Also, one more thing to remember, when you are speaking to people, etc, etc, if you just keep spamming the A button, you just be careful because you will actually just keep asking them the same question over and over again. So you don't want to go too nuts, um, but we'll get there when we get to it. So, first of all then, what we're going to do is we're going to get our first four mind maps. So if we have a look in the top left hand corner there, it says you mind map at the bottom. So obviously, um, so if you click on you, which is you, yourself, I'm me? Um, we, what we're going to choose is our home again. So you are home again. Now, we need 23 specific mind map nodes, they're called. And that is for um, uh, interacting with... you got to interact with different people in order to unlock um, uh, different characters to have a look at, etc, etc. So again, there are 23 that we need to grab. And we will find the first three right here. It, well, it's technically four if you include yourself. So if you select K, which again is you, and you choose you are home again, you will unlock Catherine. And then if you select her again and choose you, and then choose we're traveling down at the Pacific coast, that will get the fourth man up called Ditchman. Um, yes, so obviously it's at the minute we've just got you, Blake, which is your brother and your mother. Um, so let's choose you were traveling again as K. So you were traveling down the Pacific coast, and that will get the fourth mind map node out already called the Ditch Man. Um, so, and then what you can do then is just um, get rid of all the dialogue. So exhaust all the dialogue options, and then we can just exit out by pressing the B button or putting your cursor over to the top left hand corner arrow. Right, so when we do that then, what we can do is get our first achievement and interact. So what we're going to do then, we're going to interact with the monkey. Basically, what we're, what's going to happen now is we're going to play two mini games that we will play a few times throughout the game. So the first one is like a glyph mini game. So four little glyphs will come up on screen and then it'll flash in a, in a particular order. It'll be random every single time, unfortunately, but it's basically like a, a Simon Says. So in whatever order the glyphs flash... That is the order that you have to do it in. But with the monkey here, you've got to do it quite quickly. Again, sadly, it is in a particular random order, but you've got to do this quickly. So for me, 
It's 3412, so you've got to be quick. 3412. If you do have um, any issues with sort of keeping up or anything, you can just keep replaying it. So, I mean, you can't technically fail. So that's what I do then. I load it up and then I just count along with it. So as I said, it was 3412 and then we go again. Right, this next mini game anyway, what you have to do is basically just press the A button. It's going to count down onto sort of outer rings into inner rings. And then when it says now, that is when you press the A button. So you'll be able to see 321, A button now, A button now. And that is how you complete that. So there are two little mini games that we will have to play Quite a few times. Now, we are going to take the monkey, by the way. This is very important for an achievement, so make sure to take the monkey. And as you can see on the left-hand side, he is now in our party. So, just uh, again, and we'll obviously get the primal steer achievement as well. So, just again, just make sure that you've taken the monkey. And they are the two mini games. The only two mini games then that we were playing quite a few times throughout the game. So, now as you can see in the local map, we're going to head out of our living room. Again, you can just press the right trigger to sift through the local map. Make sure to have a look at the photo album here on the coffee table. Now, what that's going to get us do is a whole bunch of profiles in the mind map. So, we're going to look. And what's going to um, unlock is blue Peter Pops Pierre, King Pierre Ma Melancon and Duck. And what that should also get you then is the Dim Illumination achievement as well. So that should already be 6 out of 23 of the mind maps and we're all good. So, not a lot else. A whole bunch of Jeebus-y stuff going on there. So for now, we're just going to head through the kitchen and through to the backyard on the left-hand side. And then what you're going to see is the robot. Our robot called Million. She is a hot piece of robot. If, you know, we were robots and robots were into that sort of thing. Uh, which they might just be. Just ask Bender. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and speak to her. And we are going to say uh, any particular dialogue option actually at the minute. Because what we're going to get is another three mind maps right here. So, Million is one of the mind maps. During a conversation with Million, what we're going to say is, I hear the phone ringing inside. And why would so many people be calling? So, and that will unlock the Catherine mind map as well. So, why would so many people be calling? And as you can see, as it as you can see there on the bottom of the screen, it'll always tell you when the mind map is updated. Uh, but again, if you want to, just to be on the safe side, you can always just keep checking the mind map by clicking on U slash K in the top left-hand corner to go into the mind map. And again, you should be on, well, you will be on 9 in just a minute. Uh, so, for now, we'll just spam through all the dialogue there, finish it. And, well, here we go. So, for the moment, we you should now have eight. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to get our ninth one by examining the refinery in the background while we're in our backyard. So, the refinery there, just as you can see, that's exactly where it is, right in the background. That will update your mind map, and that should be nine out of 23 already. Bangin, mangin, bangin. Right, so, what we're going to do then, we are going to, basically, we need a fuse to repair our motorcycle. Uh, so, as you can see, there's the mind map then. So, that is what it should look like for you right now, literally about nine. So, if we select Catherine here in the mind map, what we're going to do is choose your mom was conducting research for who? So, your mom, your mommy was conducting research for who? And then you can say died if you want, but we can finish the thought. That basically gives us the client mind map as well. So after this bit then, what we can do is just head to the front yard, which is just to the uh, left of the door. So from here, what we're going to do is press the A button on the Virgin of Statue Mary to the left of the door. <laughs> if she was a virgin, then I'm in my early 20s, which I'm exactly not. So interact with the shoe icon right there, which is basically use. Now we are going to get a missable achievement. So what we need to do is um, when we are closed up with her, we're going to choose the statue, and then we're going to, you have to select these following options, kneel and pray, first of all, so make sure to choose kneel and pray. <laughs> statue of Virgin, well, the Virgin Mary was kneeling, but not for that particular reason. Choose Grace. <laughs> so choose Grace. And next up, choose Women. So of course, don't go spamming the A button here, just take your time with it nice and slowly. Uh, then choose Sinners. Which would be the top option. And then finally, Amen. What on my screen looks like anal, hilariously. Um, which again, well, Virgin Mary, she'll tell you. That's probably why she was a virgin. Um, right, stop, 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 stop. Anyway, so after you get all those four, 
The full of grace achievement will unlock. They do take for some reason about 10 to 20 seconds to unlock. I don't know if it was the same for you. Hopefully not. But what we're going to do is click on the statue's face. Interact with it. Uh, basically use it. So the eye icon is obviously to look at it. And the uh, icon to the right will always be to use something. So we've used that. Uh, that will reveal a card reader. Which we will come back to a little bit later on. So what we can do again. If you press the right trigger. You can just go through onto the local map there. At the bottom right hand corner. But now what we're going to do is head to the street. We're going to Apple Street. Now, why, why can I hear CJ from uh, GTA San Andreas? Ah, uh, here we go again. Right, head on to the Dimes Discount on the local map. So Dimes Discount. We are going to be getting a new mind map and another achievement coming up very soon. You can interact with the film set here on the left, but we're just going to interact with the gas station. The film set is just for a, a laugh. So nothing's really happening there. But to move forward, we're going to click the Gassy, Gracias, Gracias station. And Troy, who looks more like a homeless, drug-infused undertaker, um, will, start, will start talking to us. Now, you do have to um, say things in a particular order in order to get WoW to fight. So, now, WoW Troy, you look like shit. And then the top option there, sorry, I did go a bit um, fast there, but my mom just died. Uh, get lost. And then next up, so there's the mind map for Troy. That'll be number 10 out of 23. Um, by the way, if something doesn't happen, you can literally just reload the auto save, and it'll normally start. So if you mess up here for whatever reason, as we say, um, what kind of... Uh, no, yeah, what kind of shnit? Uh, but yeah, if for whatever reason the fight option doesn't come up, just quit out, come back in, and it'll reload at the auto save. As we say, that sucks there. And now we should be able to fight. Now, the, how you fight in this game is literally with just the two mini games. The one with the glyphs and the one with the um, outer ring little puzzle as well. Now, K will always have the glyphs. So no matter who you fight, K will always have the glyphs. You can choose the monkey as well, which will have the outer ring puzzle. Now, remember how you do that? So you click on him here. As soon as it says now, then you click it. Bang, bang, bang. That'll get him down. Troy then will punch us in the face. Monkey will have a rest. So now it's K's turn, which will be the glyph puzzle. So again, just keep your eyes nice and peeled, nice and focused. So it's 2-1-3 for me. There we go. And then you can use Monkey again. Do the same puzzle again. So like I said, there it is only those two mini-game puzzles that we have to do in the entirety of the game. So hopefully you are pretty squared away. But um, there we go. Once you beat the Krinsky out of Troy Bag or the um, coke-headed... <laughs> the old coke-headed heroin addict <laughs> addicted Undertaker... You will get the class traitor achievement, and we can just go ahead and nip straight into the gas station now. See, we wouldn't have had to knock him out with a pet a pet toy monkey if he just let us through. So we're going to grab fuses here, which is just in, uh, well, just underneath right there. Now, we can't actually just leave because this computer, who can't actually chase us or anything, will be pissed off and won't actually let us leave. So, go into your inventory, so click the A button over to your inventory on the bag on the right hand side. Click and drag the fuses over to the price scanner right next to the baldy robot. The, the, the really uh, just miserably serious looking robot as it were. And that's that. Now we can pick up the fuses and we should be golden as nuggets, boy. <laughs> right, so, only one thing left to do and that's leave the gas station, return home, Again, like I said, I'll say it for the last time, pressing the right trigger will get you uh, sifting through those locations a lot quicker on your local map. Um, <laughs> so which we're going to have to do. So go home. And it was actually at this point where I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that bit. And then we're going to go to the backyard. We're going to leave the questionable Virgin Mary statue. So how come you got this... Some Virgin Mary, you've got some white down your down your chin. What's that about? You dribbling up? Anyway, you'll be able to. <laughs> so what we're gonna do when we speak to Million right here? Uh, we're gonna have a good chat, and then we'll be able to head for the Sapi paperbacks books whenever we're good to go. So when we can, let's just say let's go. Hey, let's go. Right, mate. So, as we are, we're going to grab a, another couple of mind map entries here. So, we're going to speak with Million, 
while we're both on the way here to sappy paperbacks after she joins the party. So what I end up doing here is just, um, I'll just go ahead and click million here on the left. And we'll start having a little chat. And then what we can do is just spam through all the dialogue options and that will get us, not only will it get us the mind map entry of Catherine and the report of construction, you should also get the black ink of the mind achievement for unlocking at least 50% of the NPC profile. So, uh, million, don't look at me like that, babe. <laughs> oh, well, what are you going to do to me? You're going to zap my balls off? Damn! Right, mate. So, the achievement now should be unlocking. There it is. Black Ink of the Mind, yeah! That sounds like it could be a good song. So, what I'm going to do, go into the mind map, select Catherine, our mommy, and then choose your mom was conducting research. So, your mom was conducting research in the lake. I bet she was. Yeah, yeah. So, in the lake, and that will get us the next mind map entry called Something in the Lake. That's uh, very fantastically named right there. So we can just back out of here now. Now if you press the right bumper, you can either put your cursor over or just press the right bumper which will put you on the overworld map on the right hand side. Again, obviously it's always easier to press the right bumper button. And now what we're going to do is head for Sarpy Bucks. So as you can see, a couple more arrows will appear in just a little bit. But Sarpy Bucks is all the way over the right hand side. Sappy Sappy Bucks. It's a love story about how two people hate each other and then they love each other at the bit, at, at the end. Right, very important achievement and manual saving coming up right here. What we're going to do is head into the bookstore. Um, we are going to speak to Erika first. Erika Manika. Oh baby, when you talk like that, you make a woman go mad. So be wise and be in jail for tax evasion. Well done Shakira, Shakira. So after you speak to her, the mind map entry of Blake will appear. But after this, we are going to make, and very importantly, we're going to make a manual save. So again, just choose any dialogue option you want. The mind map will update, and then we can just chill it. So then, no matter how creepy the cat is that's staring at you, this is the another glyph mini game. Only this time, the glyphs go a lot faster. So, what you're gonna do? Um, it's about five times that uh, we have to basically do like five uh, sort of mini games, as it were. Uh, but you're gonna have to win the five challenges in a row to unlock the achievement and get the crouton phone case as well. Phone case doesn't matter, but the achievement does. So what you're gonna do then is click on the cat. Now, every if any time you fail, as you can see, they go quite fast. Any time you fail, you have to start again from the beginning. And again, sadly, I'm not sure if it's random. Uh, I do believe that it is random. So every time you lose, um, it is random as well. So uh, there's there's nothing I can really say or do in order to uh, make this go any easier. You'll just have to get good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
hilariously then, after you have done it, again, hopefully that wasn't too bad for you. I really hope you were able to do that quite quickly. I did fail once myself, in all fairness. Um, but the owner, Erica here, absolutely craps her pants. And well, that's it. Now we're pretty much squared away. We're good to go. Uh, but what, after you get the achievement, what we are going to do is make, uh, we're going to reload that save. This is very, very important to get another achievement later on. So as soon as you get that Felicite achievement, make sure to reload and that the cat is in the store. Just like this before we head back outside. Again, this is for a very important achievement later on. Otherwise, you'll be ha you'll be having to play through all this again and get into Act 2, which is a pain in the ass. So, after this bit, um, speaking of Erica, we've done all that. We've left. It's going to trigger a special flashback sequence to Catherine, the mommy. It's Mommy, and we're also going to be getting another missable achievement. Mommy. By the way, if you don't know already, uh, Catherine currently on the, uh, you know, uh, sort of. She's well, she's going to die soon. I'm afraid. Um, I mean, it's pretty obvious fairly on, so I don't think it's too much of a spoiler. But again, apologies if it is. Anyway, we're going to be coming up to a missable achievement, which I will let you know what it is in just a bit. But for now, spell spammo, Mr. Hambo. So we're about to get nine pictures. What you can do is either save it or delete it. What we're going to do is delete all nine of these pictures, okay? So you're going to get three at a time. Make sure to choose the bin icon in the top right corner of every picture. Make sure to bin that crap. Since we're about to be, you know, ashes to ashes, dust to dust and all that anyway, well, we might as well forget all the happy memories we once had. Although a tree, a big eyeball and a man is just not very happy. But that's all you do for the next minute or two. Keep spamming through the dialogue, and then just make sure to delete every picture. I mean, they don't look like happy memories. Although a fire's a nice happy memory, unless you, you know, you, you burnt your nipples on it or something. Well, actually, to be fair, that last clown one, um, who is actually called Paw Paw in this game. Yeah, that's enough to get rid of my memories. But anyway, that should now get you the forgetted achievement. Again, just wait around for about 10, 20 seconds or so uh, for the achievement to unlock. They did unlock very slowly in the game for me. Um, so there we go. We've deleted everything. We are good, dog. We are good. Uh, well, what the hell is up with that receptionist? Jello, Jello, anybody there? C can you hear me? Looking more like a jellycopter, more than a jelly receptionist right now. Uh, anyway, she's off her nuts. So what we're going to do is interact with our, basically, mind mode, mind node, as it were. And we actually have to uh, interact with our phone. So again, press the right bumper, of course, to get into your phone. So it's a bit different with Catherine's one. So she's got a phone rather than whatever that is that uh, Kay's got, which is the world map. So a couple of things that you can have a look at here. Uh, you can have a look at the messages and go through each message if you want. This isn't particularly needed or necessary to in order to progress the game, but it is um, obviously worth just having a little look and seeing what the hell's going on. Always interesting this stuff. Uh, so that is what you can do then. So we had a click on Catherine's portrait, interact with the smartphone, and now what we're going to do then, as you could just see there, we clicked on the um, duck which basically tells us a little quack job app. It uh, basically updates our objective. Now what we have to do is speak to Miss Jellycopter herself. The old <laughs> the old LSD bag, I'll just call her. I don't know what the hell's up with her. Anyway, once we've spoken to her, again, spam through any dialogue that may come up. 
we are now able to leave. And we can just do that by clicking the right trigger once to go into per Perdido Street. And then we can go to the overpass using the local map again. Uh, so go to the overpass. And then from here, we're going to head to the French Quarter. So there it is, French Quarter. So, but there's only two. You can have a, again, just like in uh, throughout the majority of the game, you can speak to anyone that you particularly wish, uh, such as these guys right here, but they don't actually help with anything. What we are going to do is, very importantly, there's a Santa, <laughs> quote-unquote Santa, by the way, on the right-hand side. We need to give him our last dollar, and this is very important for another miserable achievement later on. You can speak to the hot dog vendor um, as well, but he will be... He doesn't really do anything yet apart from smile and sell 15-year-old hot dogs for some particular reason. Mate, I tell you what, you, you, you'll sell it... That is staler than... Well, it's going to be staler than us as Catherine in about six years when we're dust to dash, ashes, ashes to ashes and all that stuff. Uh, this, man, i got to stop saying that, sorry. Anyway, after this little conversation then, we'll come back to him in just a bit. But as we speak to Santa, again, what you're going to do is we're going to say the word absolutely. So he's going to say, hey, Santa Claus is a little down his luck. All my reindeer and dig all shut down over, um, <laughs> over the war zone and stuff. Make sure to choose absolutely. This is for giving Santa your last dollar. Does he spend it on heroin? Oh, absolutely. That's what Santa is. Years of giving kids all toys and stuff and flying everywhere on Christmas night. Bound to take its toll. So, Heroin Santa, make sure that you've given him your last dollar. And then we can just interact with the door on the left. If you've forgotten to do it, I highly advise just uh, reloading your last auto save and making sure to do it. Otherwise, you'll have to play th all the way through to Act 2 again. So, now we're going to speak to uh, Cornelius Flannel, Flannel Face, whatever his name is right there. And then choose the top option. And then what's going to happen is that basically we need a secret knock. And the only way we need to do that is to basically get someone to chow down on his 14-year-old unwashed hot dog sausage. Nice. So even though we are dying, we're going to help out somebody else because that is just the kind of person that we are. Right, so what we're going to do is head back to the overpass, and there's a guy standing on his own on his left, the onlooker. Uh, so that is exactly who, I, we, who we are going to be speaking to, um, first of all. But we are going to also be getting another highly missable achievement. So speak to the showgoer, and again, all you're going to be saying then uh, is basically that there is a guy who is um, selling some blue waffle hot dogs. So... Just choose the options that relate to that. Again, it doesn't matter if you go through all of the dialogue options. Just, you know, again, try not to keep spamming the A button because you just keep asking them the same thing over and over and it's a pain in the butt snatch. Right, so after we've spoke to him and he's gone, hmm, okay, let's do this tank. Again, make sure to make a hard save right here. Not a soft save. Uh, no, 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 no. No, it's got to be hard, otherwise nobody will like it. So it has to be a hard save. There are two achievements that we're going to get in this little puppet show. And one of them is for not hitting the boat on the walls at all. Um, now, it's very, it is very easy to maneuver the boat, but I highly advise taking your time and not going too fast. So, uh, I, I will let you know exactly what you mean when we get there. As we uh, four eyes on the curtains, that is not creepy at all. So here we begin then. Now what you can do is um, don't worry about the cursor. Ignore the cursor. Just focus on the boat. So you can obviously uh, go forward. All we're doing is pressing the left stick to move forward and basically all around. So it's only the left stick that we need. Now what we have to do for the Bayou boss achievement is not hit the boat once at all. Um, you've got a little health bar in the upper left hand section. So if that's gone down for some whatever particular reason, um, you'll just have to unfortunately reload your save and try again. Uh, but from our starting position then, what we need to do is just go sort of up to the top left-hand corner. We're going to get the Gator Case achievement first. Um, now again, obviously, 
the faster you go, the harder it will be to slow the boat down. So that's why I said just little inputs with the left stick. That is the most important. You know, we're not in any particular rush for this one. So just take your time. Uh, so we're heading right. And now what we're going to do is start heading up again. So in this next little section right here, we are going to head up. So just take your time. Be very, very careful. Again, like I said, just ignore the cursor. That only serves as a distraction. Just focus primarily on the boat. So now, of course, we're just going to head left. Take your time. Small little left stick inputs. Come on. You are the little left stick input. Kings and queens. Uh, I know that because I've seen it. No, wait, that's on stalkery. Uh, scratch that one. So just head towards the eye. You will automatically stop, so don't worry about that. But what will happen there is we get the gator case, so we will get that particular achievement. Uh, sadly, we do have to make our way back, basically to the starting point, which again is fine if you're having a good time with it so far. Sift through, sifting through the objects there makes that all good. Uh, but we don't have to go up. We can actually just head to the right and down. As you can see, <laughs> I almost messed that one up. The faster you go, the darker it gets as well. So that's why it's just easily worth just taking your time and heading down into the starting section. Um, but yes, so don't go too fast. Darker it gets. What I was going to do was actually just smash my way. I, I was just going to smash it and then start it again um, until I realized that I was that close. So what's going to happen then? Um, I believe if you press the Y button, you can see the map um, zoomed out. So what we're going to do, you, if you do that, you can see there are two pairs of basically lips. One on the left side, one on the right. We're not going for the one on the left side. We are going to the right. So we're going to start heading up. There we go. You can just see the one set of lips. This is where you do have to be very, very importantly careful for the bio boss achievement. Again, don't hit the walls. Just take your time mega and then just spam through the dialogue. You Once you get to the lips, you will stop. Huh, your lips, my ass. They should meet. Classic. So, we are going to agree to the deal. Make sure to agree to the deal. And now, what you have to do is basically head all the way to the left-hand side set of lips now. Uh, now, there is a particular reason we're doing it in this order. Basically, if you go to the crocodile first and kill the shrimper, the achievement won't unlock. So, you actually have to go to the shrimper first, kill the gator, go all the way back to the shrimper here on the right-hand side. And that is what will unlock, again, providing you haven't smashed your boat up or touched the walls at all. So head, just head all the way to the left until you see the next set of lips. Choose the dialogue option to kill the gator and just go back to the shrimper. And job done.
Somebody was hungry for that Iceland Tesco horse crocodile meat, huh? <laughs> Delicious. I mean, disgusting. Blah, gross. What the hell, man? Meh. Right, so there we go then. Uh, but again, providing you hit... Uh, you didn't hit the boat without uh, getting any damage. Once we get that achievement, we can head back to the um, place here. Um, to the overpass or the well, wherever the hell we are. Interacting with Flannel Face right here. And he has put his 14-year-old unkempt hot dog straight down the throat of the showgoer. And of course, that is obviously going to make him sick. It would make anyone sick. A very kempt hot dog would make me sick as well, to be honest. Depends on the size and length and girth and everything. But anyway, after that, he has shown us the knock. So you can now interact with the door by, of course, pressing the hand icon. And Catherine's going to be like, bruh, that was the secret knock. You son of a flannel face, monkey nuts. And then we can just head in. So that cat looks awfully familiar, doesn't it? That's the one that we did in the first save, smash up in the air. But of course, since we didn't this time... Dog's just going to be chilling there, dog cat. So interact with the uh, crystal ball, and then creepy woman will appear. Uh, Rosie. Rosie and Jim. Smoking a blim. So you can uh, go through any dialogue option that you particularly wish. Does not make an absolute difference. And after that, we're going to say, yeah, goodbye, you freak. We're out of here. Uh, so let's go back outside into the French Quarter. As you can see, there is a guy just by the door. That's who we're going to speak to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let us speak to Dalalas. Oh, Dalalas. Nice mustache right there. And what's going to happen then is he is going to join our party. And of course, you can tell when people have joined our party by the left-hand side, how many people are on it. Now, as you could probably tell, a few times I kept spamming the A button by accident and talking to whoever uh, quite a few times. So, interact with the phone. Again, press the right bumper there to interact with the phone. And then we're going to click on the Quack Job app. So, the, the duck, basically. Just quick, j -j -j <laughs> quick on the Quack. Click on the duck to get our next objective. And you can read it if you want, but eh, I can't be asked reading. I was elected to lead, not to read. So we can just go, <laughs> we can just head for the exit. And then we're going to click, as we go back into our phone, click the Order Ride app. So this is basically, you can either call it uh, Uber or you can call it Fake Taxi. I'm going to be calling it Fake Taxi because there's money to be made, bruh. So head to the Ho Eagle Wholesale Destination, the only other arrow on the map, which will cost us 17 bucks. Delicious. So, uh, or since we're in Fake Taxi, it's going to cost us nothing. Happy days. So, uh, we're going to click on the warehouse, go inside of the warehouse, go inside of the warehouse, of course, and then we're going to click on the only hotspot available, which is directly in front of us, watch the scenes, and this is the first act complete. Now, for some reason, there was a giant eagle with a chunky nose just chilling and speaking to us. <gasps> okay, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go die now, okay, because screw that, man, <laughs> screw that. So there are only three acts in the game, and Act 2 is the longest of the three. Reformery always, but that will be Act 1, Complete Aroni. And we're going to be getting a whole bunch of mind maps as we begin. So we're going to be speaking to uh, Million, Millions and Millions, the sweets. What we can do is actually just go straight for the overworld and head for the Floodgate Tavern destination, which would be on the left-hand side of the arrows. Uh, there it is, top left-hand corner, Floodgate Tavern. If you haven't unlocked it, what you need to do is return home and enter Floodgate Tavern by going through Apple Street. So that's just in case you haven't unlocked it. But of course, if we have and we're all good as golden bowling nuggets, head inside. And we go to see Matt LeBlanc. His name is Brett LeBlanc, but uh, he looks more like Joey, if Joey was an incredible creep from Friends. So, what we're going to do, after speaking to him, we're going to interact with the TV. Um, and that will get us the lucky mind map entry. Uh, so speaking of Brett, 
interact with the television, and then speak into Gus, who, who is the barman as well. That will give us three new mind map entries. Uh, so you, you can actually just say, uh, I'm all good for now, thanking Yao. So, and then we're going to speak with Mr. LeBlanc, old Joey from Friends. If it was set, you know, in like, probably Mexico or something. You could get away with being a Mexican Joey, I think. So, what you have to do then? Um, <laughs> a lot of conversation will happen here, by the way, where you don't have any dialogue options to input. So just spam through it all as you do. So we need to get a beer for the Alchemist Frolic. So speak to Gus and then choose the second option. I need a beer for your uh, Mexican Joey friend, right? Jesus, and he's going to be like, right, fine. So a beer will automatically appear. That'll be all good. Now what we're going to do is speak to LeBlanc again, and that'll get us the Bloodline mind map entry. Uh, so again, it doesn't matter what particular dialogue options you pick. You can just choose one and then leave. Now, you can tell the dialogue options don't matter because a lot of the time it's just spamming the A button and accidentally clicking the top option and that seemed to work just fine, just fine. So, after this one then, what we're going to do, we need to, to ask LeBlanc about Paw Paw to get another uh, mind map entry. But that's not an extra one, that's just sort of uh, added on. Uh, so, after uh, chatting with LeBlanc again right here, and again, if you want to, you can obviously just exhaust all the dialogue options if you're really following the story or anything like that. Uh, but... He is basically going to request yet another round. So after we speak to LeBlanc, we need to then speak with Gus again. So, uh, speak to Gus again. So obviously after we've spoken to LeBlanc... She gets going to want another round. I'll shave that mustache before I get you another round. But we need some information. So get him another drink then. So second option once again. There we go. Uh, so that's two beers now for him. So we're going to talk to LeBlanc again to get some more dirt. Uh, for another couple of mind map entries, which we need, we actually have to ask LeBlanc a couple of things. First of all, it's what would S.H.I.E.L.D. be looking for? So, now again, if you're just going to exhaust all the dialogue options, it doesn't matter, but I'll tell you which ones are the most important. What would S.H.I.E.L.D. be looking for? And then why didn't you stop the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents? So why didn't you stop the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents? So when you ask for those two, you will get the Laura St. Clair and Brett LeBlanc but my map entries. And also, when talking about Laura St. Clair, you need to ask LeBlanc about who's her father. So obviously I've already just done that one. But um, if, you ask, if you ask him who's her father, that will update the mind map as well. So again, for the three, you're asking LeBlanc, what would she be looking for? Why didn't you stop the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents? And who's her father? And then just keep on getting through all the dialogue to end this part. <laughs> Not only that, the cheeky git, which I'm actually very impressed with, wants a side of dirty fries, which uh, 
You know what? I'll share with him in that one, to be fair. So, so again, choose the second option when you speak to Gus. Right here. So, um, he's got two beers and a set of dirty fries. Now, I'll give him that. That is some legendary stuff right there. Right. So, uh, after this part's done, what we can actually do now is we actually have to get a new my map entry. So, speak to LeBlanc one more time after you've given him what he needs and what he wants. Um... And then what we're going to need to do is head back outside and go back into our mind map menu and select Duck's profile. So again, after all the conversation, dialogue options don't matter here. Um, we're just going to spam through it as quick as we can. Alright, so after that f is finally done, and we're going to leave the guy to basically diarrhea himself in delicious food and drink. Go into your mind map. Now, Duck is going to be on the right-hand side. So where Catherine is in the middle, directly to your right, all the way over the right-hand side, is where Duck is. Now, if for whatever particular reason he doesn't appear... Um, now, he will always be blurry, Duck, so don't worry about that. But if for some reason you click on him and the rest of the dialogue options don't come up... What I ended up having to do myself was just basically go through each character, exhaust all the dialogue with each character as quick as we could, and then the um, dialogue for Duck came up. So again, not sure if that was just me, if it was a bug, or, or if it was uh, intentional, but try clicking on Duck first. If you get more than just the first set of um, you know dialogue on the left-hand side when it comes up, then that's all good. If not, go through, every, go through everyone and everything, exhaust on all the dialogue as much as you can, May take a minute or two, and then you should be able to uh, carry on with him. Also, when we finally are able to get to Duck, all we're going to be doing then is when we select him here in the mind map, we are just going to exhaust all the new dialogue options and that will get us the mind map, mind map entry for Dimes. So eventually when it appears, just exhaust all the dialogue options. Again, may take a few seconds to a minute or so, but that'll get you the mind map entry Dimes. And when we say dimes, we just sound like an Aussie slash New Zealander just saying dames. Um, but once we are here, go into your world map, go to dimes, which is on the left hand side, as you can see. And then we can just go ahead and enter Duck's home. And then we can fish around. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> nah, just joking. If you uh, need any help, press the Y button and the hotspots will appear if you are ever stuck. Just press the Y button and the hotspots will appear. Click on the lamp there and speak to Duck. Now, there's a couple of things we're going to ask for a whole bunch of mind map entries here. The first is going to be um, head drive. Head drive, question mark? So, um, to be honest, it's probably easier if you literally just go through all the dialogue options this time. But basically, the ones that you particularly need are head drive, which is this one here. And then, so you kept up with my mom. So you kept up with my mom. Uh, did you attend her funeral? The ring she wore around her neck was fake. And then they stole my mum's stuff and ask why. 
Um, but yeah, so, but what I would do then is just go through absolutely uh, exhaust all the dialogue options. So again, just to be on the safe side here, I've exhausted all the dialogue options, but the only two that you need is to ask Duck about his head drive and asking, uh, Kay, did you attend her funeral? Followed by the ring she wore around her neck was fake. They are the two that we most importantly needed for the uh, mind maps. Uh, so, but like I said, once you've exhausted all the dialogue options, it's all good anyway. So what we can do is just head into the library and have a look here in the deer head on the right hand side. Uh, you're going to need to interact with that twice, actually, uh, in order to pull out the key, pull something out the deer's ass. Which, uh, I mean, we're not in Canada right now. That's a Canadian pastime, isn't it? That's what Maka used to do before he used to do guys. <laughs> I'm just, just joking. I'm sorry, Maka. I didn't mean to, to make you the butt of my joke there. Sorry. Um, yeah, get it? I didn't even mean to do that one. So interact with the box on the left, uh, the lock box. Grab the key, pull it down to the lock box on the left, and it's basically a letter. Now we need to read the letter for a hint on Duck's past relationship. And now what we need to do is interact with the console, the monitor on the screen, uh, on the table. Sorry. So this is like a. This is a mini game. So what we have to do is basically um, use the terminal here, of course, but we have to get the drones in, this from A to I, I believe, so A, B, C, D, E, H, J, J I, Jesus Christ, I just messed up the alphabet, wow, oh, I bet you think I'm just beautiful right now, there it is, anyway, so what we need to do is get all the three drones that are in the A zone away, and you only get ten moves in which to do it in, so I'll tell you what to do, so, first of all, you're going to move one zone, uh, one drone from zone B, so click on zone B, and then click on zone F, and then that will automatically fly one drone over. Next, we're going to go one from zone C, so click on zone C, and then go ahead and click on zone B. Next, we're going to move one from zone D to zone H. Then we're going to move two drones from zone H to zone I, so click on zone H, then I. And then what we need to do is click on zone H again, and then again. So click on zone H twice, and then click on zone I. That will put the two over. Then move one drone from zone D to zone H. So one from D to H. And that will basically force the system to move one drone from zone A to zone D. Then we're going to move one drone from zone E to zone D. So E to D from A to D. Yeah. And then we're going to move the remaining, remaining drones from zone A to zone C. And again, zone A to zone E. And that is how you will complete that puzzle in nine particular moves. There's no achievement for it. But, you know, well, we're there. And Million's going to be like... Because that's how everyone speaks in the game. 
Like they're starting to start up a failed motorbike or something. Because uh, that's apparently what it sounds like. So we're going to head out. We're going to head back out completely out of Duck's house. Right into the Australian slash New Zealand's Dames. <laughs> into the Dimes. Now we're going to make sure to get a missable achievement here. So go into your world map. Again, pressing the right bumper here. Very importantly, we need to go to the Mausoleum. Um, oh, in fact, we need to open up the mind map first. Check out the... Checking out all the new updates. Sorry about that. Just getting a little ahead of myself. Reading Blue's profile. That is who we need to interact with here. The top, top sort of left corner. Just again, exhaust all the dialogue. And the mausoleum will unlock. There it is. As a new destination. Alright. So we can finish the thought. Finish the thought. And then we're going to go back to our house. That's what we need to do. Heading all the way back home. Don't need to go into Ducky's house. We'll see you later. Well, the way you're looking, you're not looking very good. We may see you in the next life, apparently. So, head into the backyard of the house. And there's going to be a pry bar. Or a crowbar. Or a something bar. I prefer a chocolate bar, but a pry bar it is. Pick that up off the ground just by the truck. And now, again, of course, we need to press the right bumper. Go into the world map. Or the overworld. <laughs> And then we're going to head to the mausoleum, which is just over to the right-hand side, just close to the sappy, sappy books. Go to the left-hand side, which is, that is the mausoleum. So the very left-hand side there is the mausoleum. And then we're going to click on the left-hand side, crypt. This is, of course, this is not spooky, creepy, or zombified in any way. Next, you need to get your uh, pry bar from your inventory. So, of course, go into your inventory. Drag it over to where it says Madère. 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 That's any English person on holidays, that is. Can I have a Madari curry, please? It's not how you pronounce that, you stupid man. So, read the letter inside, which you can do. And then, more importantly, grab the ring right next to it. Um, the, the, the letter is just uh, getting a mind map entry for Catherine. So, extra story rated stuff. But grabbing the fake ring will get you the fake ring achievement. That's very, uh, very well thought of right there. Uh, so eventually you should unlock. Again, it, a lot of these achievements really paranoid me out in all fairness. So there we go, man. Fake rings unlocked. We's good as hell, dog. Good as hell. So what we're going to do then, we're going to go into the world map, go to Dime's Discount. Go into the Dime's Discount now. We're heading for the batch here. So on the local map, the Baturi is the basically top option right there. We're going to speak with Lucky right here. Lucky, he didn't turn into Santa Claus, because, man, Santa Claus is looking pissed. Uh, so just choosing uh, any particular dialogue option, he, he's basically going to request that he finds his pet dogs, or his pet dog called Pots. Uh, but he is actually a mind map entry, uh, just for speaking with him, so that's all good. So returning to the Dimes discount, we're going to enter the gas station now. Apparently Troy still just knocked... Uh, sorry, not Troy, sorry. He's the cocaine undertaker, isn't he? Uh, so into the gas station, grab the dog food from the shelf here next to the entrance. And again, you'll have to grab it from your inventory and use it on the price scanner. Now, what we're actually going to be doing then is getting the one achievement. And remember where we got the Felicite achievement earlier on. Um, we're heading for the overworld. We're going to sappy paperbacks. Uh, now, this is why we reloaded the save. Because you couldn't get these two achievements done in one playthrough unless we saved it and then reloaded. So, there is the dog, which is just outside. Which you might have noticed him a bit earlier on before we went in. So, what we're going to do, we can speak to the dog if you want. And he's going to say... Uh, normally, he'd say woof woof. But uh, he's going to say growl this time. Uh, so after you give him the dog food, um, uh, Pots will now join the party. Now we can go into the bookstore. Now, of course, remember, the cat has to be here, so that is exactly where it is. Make sure that you speak to Erica first, okay? So make sure to speak to Erica first, only because if you do the achievement first and the cat, again, the cat will knob off somewhere, you can't... Uh, Erica's going to be too pissed off to speak and you will miss out on any extra little mind map. Not for the achievement... But you will miss out on, like, extra story stuff. So that is why we speak to Erica first. Get in, uh, get all the dialogue and information that we can. 
And then when the yapping finally stops, what we're going to do then, we're going to click. So after Potts is in the party here, the dog, we are going to click on Potts' portrait in the party menu. So on the left hand side, so click on it. The cat is going to snap its pants. And uh, well, <laughs> uh, that's... <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's so funny. But uh, yeah, the cat's going to go. So either way, the cat's going to fly up and Eric is going to be like, bro, why did my cat just fly to the ceiling? Anyway, the uh, Cats and Dogs achievement should eventually unlock. There it is. Then we can grab the Croton phone case and head off. So th that particular achievement is all done and over with. So we don't have to worry about making any more saves or reloading any for the time being. Uh, but that's funny. And um, we don't actually have to speak to Erica at all throughout the rest of the game. So what we're going to do is head back to the Bertur and speak with Lucky again. So of course we need to go back into the overworld. We need to head to uh, Dimes Discard, head to the Berturé, Berturé, and speak with Lucky again, now that we've got Pots with us, and apparently after he scared the crap out of the cat. And again, whatever you wish, dialogue options don't matter, just spam through it until we can stop talking. Um, and then eventually you'll just be able to choose the option, help is just what we need, Santa Claus. <laughs> So, after the, well, I'll call him the alcoholic Santa. Uh, he's not the crackhead one, is he? Uh, but what we're going to do then is uh, click on Lucky's portrait there in the pipe menu and ask him what he knows about S.H.I.E.L.D. and the St. Clair family. Um, so, let's just ask him about those two, or he's just exhaust all the dialogue options if you so wish. Um, but I don't think this actually makes it, I think, again, this is just for more story-related stuff rather than actual uh, progression of the game. But it's always worth doing. It's always worth having a little look at. If, again, if you're following and interested in the story, it's always worth doing. Uh, otherwise, we can just dismiss him. And then what we can do is use the local map here to get the hell out of here, dog, and return home. So let us go home. Uh, we can't use the world map for whatever reason, but we're going to head all the way home and head into the back yard. Uh, we're going to get a new mind map entry here for speaking with Lucky while we're in the back backyard to unlock S.H.I.E.L.D. So, nipped at backyard, speak with Lucky while he is here, there he is, old alcoholic Santa, and then exhaust all the possible dialogue options with him, which we are actually going to do this time. <laughs> Don't worry, Santa, I'll get you that bottle of rum for Christmas. Otherwise, we can speak to Million, and uh, if you want a bottle of something, I'll get you a nice bottle of oil. <laughs> nice bottle of motor oil. How about that, yeah? Thank you, uh, M Million. Uh, M Asimo. Oh, uh, monkey's apparently nipping off anyway. That's all good. We will see Monkey... Uh, in quite a little while so yeah for the rest of the act we have no monkey even though he's served basically no purpose that's all good so you can speak to the rest of the members of the, your party if you want otherwise what we're going to do is just open up the world map and click on the shield destination which is basically right in the middle and now we're going to actually be coming up to another fight sequence so of course we're going to be doing the glyph and the ring mini game so um these guards basically have guns, but the rules are exactly the same as we uh, did with, uh, fought with Troy back in Act 1. So we can select any party member, complete the on-screen quick time event challenge. So what we're going to do is choose Lucky for the majority. His will always be the rings as well. So choose any guard that you want and then just say, now A button, A button. And there we go. We will obviously get shot, but apparently we're all good. Um, it doesn't matter who you choose next because K and Million, they're pretty weak in this one. So it depends if you want to do the glyph challenge or the um, million does the ring challenge. So it depends which one you do. Uh, either way, you won't do much damage. Now we can choose Lucky again, do the ring challenge, and then just keep going until both guards are completo and dunno. Now, if you do actually need to heal, before choosing an enemy to hit, you will see a green heal bar in the uh, top right hand corner. So make sure to choose heal if you would rather heal for the round. Uh, by the way, when you do complete a fight as well, everyone's health goes back to full. So that is, uh, well, that is good and nullified. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
So here we are then, back as Catherine, back as, uh, you know, we're speaking to a bloody eagle for, for whatever particular reason, with all types of stranger thing looking things right there. Creepy as. So once we've done that then, uh, we've completed that part, we're going to leave the warehouse, we're going to speak to Dallas again. Uh, if any dialogue options appear, does not matter. Right, and then after this then, what we can do is go into our smartphone menu. We're going to click on the fake taxi app, uh, basically to return to the world map. Again, it's, it would cost us in-game, but fake taxi is good. It keeps letting us go for free, I'm not sure why. Uh, just fake taxi is very good. I don't know what it is personally, but there we go. So we go into the Promenade Mall, which is in the top right-hand corner. It's in walking distance apparently, but we're actually going to spend a fiver. Um, we will arri uh, arrive here at the mall parking lot and go inside the mall entrance. What we're going to do is speak with the... Uh, now, these guys are called Garrets, okay? It's kind of like a cult or something. But they are Garrets. And, again, whatever dialogue option, it doesn't matter. Because eventually what's going to happen is they will very helpfully install Kenner John's Ac Apocryphon. Apocryphon, yeah, that'll do the app into our smartphone anyway. So just keep spamming through all the dialogue options or whatever, and eventually they will unlock the app for us. So you don't actually have to uh, interact with everything as long as it says on screen that the app has been installed. We can go into our phone and there it is. It's like the pub. The, the, the pub. The pub symbol on the right hand side. Um, and that is it. So uh, easy thing to do. You can't actually move it up and down, but you can move the phone. Uh, move the phone, sorry, left and right. And then basically what we're doing now, we've been given a job to find three virtual sculptures. Hidden throughout the town, which is always a fun thing to do when you've got the big C and when you're basically on death's door. A lot of walking around and doing things. That's exactly what you need. Not bed rest. Not trying to beat it. No, walking around and doing stuff for lazy teenage douchebags. Right, so when we head outside, what we're going to do, um, we're going to head to the left there. Uh, into the side lot. Sorry. Uh, you can speak with Keith in the car if you want, but we'll speak to him in just a little bit. Otherwise, we can go to the subdivision, sorry. So, into the subdivision, we're going to fire up the Pope app on our phone. And we're going to start scanning the spot just above, the, oh, just to the sort of left of the car. It's, again, fairly obvious which one it is. Press the A button on here, and this will be the first signalis that is done. So, that's the first one that is done. Um... Now, very important, this is, next part is going to be for an achievement in just a bit. So basically, uh, as we just smash through this bit of dialogue right here, that's all good, that's all good. Uh, what we're going to do, when we press the B button here to back out, if you've already got the one, we're going to step into the garage here on the left-hand side and speak with the Watcher. Now, if you just go through all the dialogue options, eventually he will request that we pass on a message to his son, Bruce, but we actually need something to record a message with. So, after this, we will 
need to get the uh, recorder messenger bravolia and come back again to this part later on anyway Right then, who wants to do some fake taxi? I do some fake taxi if it pays for a lot of uh, a lot of expensive stuff that I need to get rid of. Uh, if you're going through chemo and it's a bit expensive, especially in America, you touch a baby's skin and it's going to cost you about a thousand dollars after it's born. Uh, but anyway, we are heading to the Saint Somewheres. This is the Saint Somewheres Club. We're getting another achievement here as well. So all we're going to do is remember the showgoer uh, after we ate that fourteen-year-old wiener. Um, basically, all you have to do is just keep listening to a story, and that is the showgoer's tale achievement. So speak to the showgoer, just keep asking him, um, to basically explain his story. It's going to take about a minute or two, but then the achievement will unlock, and then he will say that he hates us, mm. and that he will never put another wiener in his mouth again. Hmm. Hmm. Stand outside the bathroom door. I would like to yell at you some more. Is what he would have liked to said before he is wiener come out of his mouth. So, uh, ask the promoter who is the only guy on the right hand side. Uh, we're going to ask him about the second sculpture. And we're basically going to learn that some ditch man has stolen the electronic device. And he's basically going to tell us exactly where it is. So it's not here. So just spam through the dialogue as he can. And then when we get the... Uh, sort of dialogue to come up and we're all good asking about the ditch man and everything then we can leave so again whap into your fake taxi so the order app or the drive order app of course the order ride fake taxi app I tell you what I wish it was that easy bloody hell uh, now we're going to head back to the promenade mall and then this time we're going to head for the drainage canal, which is off to the right of the pole, uh, the pole marking lot, the, <laughs> the mall parking lot. So go to the drainage canal. Uh, we're going to load the Kenner John's Acrofin Pope app. And then we will be starting right at the second virtual sculpture directly in front of us. There it is. Click on it just like before. Watch the scenes and we'll be introduced to the ditch man, whose name is Paw Paw. I'm Paw Paw, but... Uh, <laughs> Not on the way that this guy is. Well, actually, I'm pretty close. See how poor I look, just like Popo? That's me going, I need views, please watch my videos so I can get some money to eat and my kids can eat some bread. Anyway, when we are done, uh, what we're going to do is go to the Virtual Sculpture 3 now. We are going to go to City Hall, so we need to head back downtown. Downtown. 
Nothing is beats Brown Town. So we are going to head um, to the overpass, first of all, and then head to City Hall, which should be here on the local map. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to speak to the guard, City Hall guard at the entrance. Again, any dialogue options do not matter. Answer him or whatever it is until we are allowed access. So, bit of a weird text, sort of text adventure style uh, mini game coming up here. So we have to basically explore the multiple floors by navigating using the dialogue choices. So, first of all, what we're going to do then, we are going to, on 1F, what we need to do is select two elevators. So, two elevators. And then we go into the stairwell. So, to the stairwell next. Then we're going to go down. And we will be at the basement. So when we go down, we're going to arrive at the basement. So here is B, number B. We're going to go left, next. So go left. Eventually, there we go. And then we're just going to go ahead and speak to the guy, or the woman. Well, it's actually a guy, isn't it? So speak. And then he's going to go off on some incredible rambling. Who? And he's basically going to give us a re receipt. Now, if you actually pay attention to the rambling... Uh, basically, a number of NPCs are going to be hidden in the stairwell on different floors, and we've got to interact with them in a very specific order. But, of course, I'm going to just tell you exactly which one it is. So, when we speak to the guy here, just go through the dialogue as you normally would. And then, um, I'll just tell you which floors to nip onto. So, leaving the hallway then, what we're going to do is go back upstairs to go to 1F. And then what we need, so we've got the receipt there in the top left hand corner. So what we need to do then, we're going to go up this time. So we're going to go up one floor. Now this first random guy is on floor 2F. So what we need to do is uh, feel around. So make sure to choose the feel around option. Feel around. <laughs> oh, what am I squeezing right here? Oh, damn, it's just my own ass. God damn, it's a peachy ass. Right, so after we've um, reached around, now we can say reach out hand, and that will get us our first number. Ignore this bit then, uh, me spamming the A button there. There was just a mistake. We don't need to go to 1F. Next up, we just need to keep going up until we reach the floor 5F. Let's keep going up until we reach 5F. When we get here, we are now going to choose to reach out the hand to get yet another number. And finally, we're going to head up to 6F, so just go up one more time, reach out hand again, which apparently I did straight away. Uh, so reach out the hand, that's going to get us another number, and then we're all good. So we're going to head up to 7F now, after this. Again, uh, be a little careful here with the spamming of the dialogue, otherwise you go up, down, and all around. Um, but we've got the three numbers, we've got the receipt, now we can head up to 7F. And then eventually, when we get here, what we can now do is just enter the doorway. Top job, right, so, let us enter the doorway. We're going to speak with the planner inside, and basically, it doesn't matter about the dialogue choices, you're going to choose whichever ones you want. And then eventually, you'll be able to choose the option... I'm trying to get to the roof. So, as soon as you can, choose I'm trying to get to the roof to obtain the city hall key card and then head all the way up to 10F.
Again, dialogue options here with Dalalalales does not matter, so spam through as quick as you can. And finally then, finally, finally, this is where the final virtual signal is. So what we need to do then is just head all the way up, go to the top of the screen there to, to uh, in order to look up. Uh, whap your phone out again. And then uh, obviously get the pop up. The pop up. Just the pop shit in the words. Head to the left slightly and that is the third and final virtual signal that we need to get. Finally. So, uh, what you think we need to do now is head to the shield refinery, but that's not exactly what we're going to do, because what we're going to do is actually get the joy achievement, so another missable achievement. And again, these achievements are just so easily missed, because you wouldn't think about going there. It serves no other purpose to the story than just to get an achievement. So, get into your phone. Uh, you might actually have to go downstairs first. Yes, you will have to go downstairs first. So, once you go downstairs first, then go to your phone. Go get the fake taxi. Big John will appear. And then what we're going to do is actually head for Holly Grove first. So right in the middle of the map there. Speaking with Dallas, we'll open up the Holly Grove map. So go to Holly Grove. And then what you're going to do is head inside the house. Eventually. Head inside the house. We're going to speak with both Austin and Martha. Doesn't matter which particular uh, order you go put it in. I just do Martha first. Uh, spam through the dialogue, choose any particular one that you want, and then we're going to interact with the present, which is under the Christmas tree. Hooray! And because apparently if you're a dad in America, you will always get a tie for Christmas. That is, even if you're not in business, you'll always get a tie for Christmas. So uh, I've never had a tie. I don't need one. So anyway, that will get you the joy achievement. So again, we're never returning here again. So Dallas, you're all good. So well, let's get the fake taxi going. We're going to go back to Promenade Mall. Thanks, John, but I'm starting to get a bit sore now, to be honest. I might have to uh, nip. I'll have to nip the fake taxi in the bud, to be honest, for five minutes. Um, so once we've got all the virtual sculptures, we have now headed up here, back to the Promenade Mall. Opening up the smartphone menu, we're going to check the Messenger app. Again, have a quick look through the, di um, the new messages if you want, but I uh, don't think it makes too much of a difference here. And then we're just going to go back inside the mall entrance to, to reveal that the Garrets, now remember that is just the cult name uh, as what it is, the Garrets have disappeared, and that is god damn annoying, the little sh shit balls. Anyway, 
What we're going to have to do then is leave, return to the drainage canal, and then speak with Poor Poor again. Poor Poor. So remember, the drainage canal here is on the right on the local map. And now we're going to head back to Kay's Pueri. All right, mate, we'll take your boat, please. Thank you very much. So we now can take control out of Kay's party. So just outside the shield refinery. So go to the left-hand side here to step under the guardhouse. And we're going to read the crane manual here, which is on the left-hand side. And, and it's basically to tell us how to operate the shield's railroad cranes. Uh, you need to write down the prefix code. The prefix code should always be the same anyway. So if you don't want to write it down, don't panic your butt snatches about it. It should be all good. So after this, we can now inspect the computer and then select the option for disengaging the lock. So thinks they think it's crisis or something. Disengage. Uh, so eventually, well, it's not this part, is it? But it, it is actually. We need to press the A button. So come on. In fact, no. The computer is the laptop, basically. So I'm just being a bit of a dumb, dumb bum right now. There it is. The computer, which is the laptop, which if they called it a laptop would have been easier to figure out. But there we go. So choose to disengage lock. And now after this one is finally done, we can leave and then we can retail, return to the shield entrance. So get out of here. Nothing else to do here. We're going to go to the shield entrance, which is basically uh, just in front of us. Uh, into the freight elevator now. Sorry. So go to the freight elevator. Now, a couple of ways to do this. You can fight the gate guards if you want, but you will pretty much die. Um, they, they are tricky guards, so we're going to make a little distraction right here. So, how do you make a distraction? Now, normally, if me personally, I had a pair of boobs, that would be the easiest distraction, but uh, if anyone looked at my boobs, they'd recoil in horror and run away. Well, still, it would work, I suppose. So we need to go right to the crane platform, and then we're going to in interact with the console here at the loader carrier to head up. Once we have headed up, what we're going to do is interact with the wires that are just hanging. Uh, fairly obvious where they're hanging, but apparently I didn't get the memo right there. Uh, so we interact with the wires hanging from above, and now, then we need to make note of the crane ID number on the robot here, which for me is 016. I think it's going to be the same for you as well. I did play this, play through this twice, and um, it, they were the same number the same times anyway. So, for this one, for this code, it should be the same anyway. Uh, you can speak if you want. It's a goddamn, it's a bit of a creepy one, actually, and even Alcoholic Santa will freak out a little bit. So after this then, we can now just head back down to the loader corridor. And um, we're going to go back down to the ground level again. So we're going to go down twice and then enter the central catwalk entrance. So go straight ahead. We're going to interact with the control booth. We're going to then select the keypad. So use keypad. And we're going to enter the crane co uh, command code, which should be for you as well, 2914016. Um, so that's 2914016, if for whatever reason it's different. Remember, you got the last three digits from the robot uh, at the very top of the crane. And in the guardhouse, in the crane manual, is where you got the first four digits. That is just in case it's random. Otherwise, I do think it's the same. 2914016. So we can now enter a movement path. So just keep spamming the A button, to be honest. This is all I do, is keep spamming the A button. It doesn't matter... You can do it wherever the hell you want. I just kept spamming the A button and then it started moving and then a distraction. Well, well, that went, yeah, pretty well. But what's going to happen is that we're going to watch the scenes and then we're going to trigger another fight against the drone priest. Now, remember, uh, if you don't like doing the cliffs, just use Lucky and just use uh, Millions. And they are the outer ring uh, mini puzzles, mini game puzzles. If you don't mind the glyphs, I just ended up using Lucky first. Oh, in fact, you can use Lucky's grenades. This time, sorry, I did forget about that. To take a lot of damage off, what I highly recommend is using Lucky's Grenades first. And then using um, either Million's Ring Attack or K's Glyph Attack, whichever one it is. Otherwise, as you could be able to see, click on the Grenade option. That'll take out a chunk of health. 
and then just keep going until the fight is done. Well, I didn't realise Santa was so pissed off this year. Carrying grenades on him and all sorts, right? So, what we can do then is now return back to the ground level and then we're going to enter the Good Hope Plantation. Now that the coast is clear, that's where the uh, couple of solid guards were a little bit earlier on. So, we're going to step into the Shield HQ, which is basically the big house in front of us, and enter the lobby after a little chat with the doorman. Again, dialogue options don't matter and God damn it, dude, what the hell happened to your head? Uh, I mean, yeah, equal opportunities for all, even with um, heads like yours. Uh, little Moonhead, Mr. Moonhead, as it were. Damn, that's uh, a... Bit... Well, anyway, entering, what we're going to do is actually get a new mind map entry, which should actually be number 22 out of 23 now. And that is for speaking with the balcony crowd. So basically, the crowd at the top there, speak with them, and that'll get you the Garrett mind map entry. You can speak with the left-hand side character, Birdhead, and ask him why is Laura at odds with her father and what's this technology you're talking about. And that just adds some more mind map entries. Um, otherwise, speaking with, like I said, speaking with the crowd is the main one we want for the achievement. But you, again, you can speak with Birdhead. Go through all the dialogue options to get some more story stuff. No, no, man. So, what we're going to do is proceed now to the elevator. So, on the uh, local map, go to the elevator. And when you're done in the lobby and you're all good, make sure you've got the 22nd out of 23 mind maps. Interact with the elevator panel. And then we're going to go back into the lobby to watch the cutscenes where Pissed Man gets even more drunker, drunker. <laughs> To be fair, that's exactly what I would do if I was king. I'd just get drunk all the time and pass out. That's the way a king should act, um, realistically. So, you're going to interact with Bruce, or the extremely drunk Bruce, and then we're going to select the option to grab him, which would be the top option there. So, select Grabble Him. Uh, basically, he's going to join our party only slightly because he doesn't actually know what's going on. So, interact with the elevator panel once again, now that Brucey Boy is on board. And now we can travel, use the elevator to travel to the executive suite, even though Bruce is going to spew and fall asleep somewhere. That'll do, that's all we needed. So we're going to get another miserable achievement here. Uh, we're just going to step over Bruce. J -j Sorry, pal. We're just going to nip through, all right. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, mate. So, what we're going to do, right, is go to executive office. You all right? And that should be directly in front of us. So what are you going to do? You're going to speak with Laura St. Clair inside. So just go through any dialogue options again. Doesn't matter which it is with Miss St. Clair. And before leaving then, make sure to interact with her box. Not, not her box, but the, the box which is on the shelf just to the right hand side here. Sorry, I didn't mean, didn't even mean to say it. Didn't mean it. Even meaning to make it sound that bad then. 
so after we've got what we need there, um, we can now leave the executive office and watch the sad, sad scenes unfold. Ah, oh, nah. Ah, oh, now come on. You must have been waiting a long time to be able to do that. So you waited all that time to speak to us once and then you just shot yourself. Okay. So go back in anyway, read the letter here on Laura's desk just by the pen pots. And that is going to unlock the Haunt Your Lonely Days achievement. So, um, yeah, it's pretty much it. So Laura must have been really depressed or really, she must have been pissed off or sad about... But, I mean, if you've been following the story, you'll know exactly what she's more sad and uh, a bit depressed about. But I was just smashing through it. So, after the achievement there, we can return to the elevator and we'll be back outside the shield refinery. And this is the sadness of times because the alcoholic Santa and his pet reindeer dog, they're gone. They're gone. So they are no more. Enjoy your retirement, Santa. You you get drunk off rum and gin. Mix it all. Have a great time. Uh, so what we're going to do now is head to the Dimes Discount. No, in fact, we're going home, sorry. We've got the Dimes Discount card from Catherine's Belongings. So head to the Virgin <coughs> Statue Mary. And then what we're going to do then is interact with the card reader and um, basically pop it in. Now, remember, you would have had to, you would have, if you've been following the guide, of course, you would have got the uh, missable achievement anyway. But just make sure to put the missable achievement, uh, do the missable achievement first if you didn't before putting the card reader in. If not, we're all good. Now we can uh, again put the discount card in, go back inside to the house, go into the kitchen and head up inside the attic. Scary, spooky stuffs, attics. Because this is where they chain poor Hugo. Too much, <laughs> too crazy for boys town. Too much of a boy for crazy town. Anyway, after you interact with the box, of course, somehow a hidden stairway will just be, a hidden ladder will just be there so we can actually climb down. And then once we climb down, all we're gonna do is examine all the hotspots inside the office. So it's basically everything that's on the table and then just save the uh, processor on the computer tower on the floor for last, as that will trigger a scene, complete Kay's current portion of the act, and head back to Catherine Land. Then, guys and gals, we are gonna get a new uh, game mechanic appear right here. So we're back in control of Catherine's party. Uh, after uh, this short scene, our smartphone is basically going to automatically install what is called the Voice Memos app. So as the well, basically it, it says what it does on the tin there. So we can use this app to record conversation snippets with any PC or any NPC that we are talking to. So. Um, so whenever any particular dialogue uh, appears, you can actually hover over that dialogue and then press the A button to record it. It is as simple as that. And the first thing that we're going to be doing is speaking to uh, Gooch. I'm sorry if uh, anyone's name is Gooch. It's just it's just funny, isn't it? I'm so sorry. Um, so what you need to do here then, you need to speak to uh, Gooch. Uh, you can actually delete messages and stuff as well if you want. And then, when Gooch basically says the option to prayer up, boys, we're going to Mars. Okay, Elon Musk. So as you can see, they're hovering over any particular dialogue. You can choose anyone. When it says prayers up, boys, we're going to Mars, press the A button. And you should have got the notification there to say that it's been recorded. And that is job done. So uh, we're going to speak with Gooch Bag again. Just ask him how he's doing. Uh, he's basically stoned. He's got a case of the munchies. And we're actually going to help him out with that one. 
So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to return to the parking lot via the drainage canal. So uh, head into the parking lot right here. What we need to do, basically we have to go uh, into the side lot. So go into the side lot now and we're going to speak to Keith in the car. So because we haven't spoke to him before, we need to speak to him now. After the do uh, Again, choose whatever options you want. But after the conversation, we're going to head just back once. So back one time into the sort of main parking area. Come back to speak to Keith again and he will just drive off. And we will get some delicious, moist, hanging potato chips. I mean, bruh, if you're hungry, you're hungry. But as soon as Keith drives away after speaking to, uh, with him twice, we can now grab the deliciously oil-infused moistage potato. I mean, they're crisps, really, aren't they? Potatoes and chips. It's just... Yeah, they, anyway, they're crisps. So, head to the sub subdivision while we are here. The subdivision with the garage, remember. So, what we can do, speak with the watcher again. And now, we're going to use the voice members to record these snippets, starting with... Bruce, you're my boy, and here is your home. So this one right here, Bruce, you're my boy, here is your home. Make sure that that part is recorded. This is very, very important for an achievement later on. So make sure that you have recorded that snippet. Bruce, you're my boy, here is your home, and then we can move on. So now we can go all the way back to the loading bay anyway, and we're going to give old Gooch Balls his potato, his, his crisps. So head into the drainage canal, head into the parking lot. He's already drinking, but we are going to give old Gooch Nozzle his uh, potato chips. There we go, job done. Now what we're going to do is record the dialogue snippet. Uh, so speak to Gooch again, and then we're going to record the next snippet, starting with John told us we're supposed to be fasting. So how do you like your chips? There it is. This one. So John told us we're supposed to be fasting, so hover over it and press the A button to record that one as well. Do job done. Now what we can do is step this should basically unlock the door now. So interact with the uh, lock screen. And then what we need to do is go into our app. Uh, so interacting here with the lock. So we need to click the voice memos shortcut, which is at the bottom right there. Open up the app and then play back the prayers up recording. So at the very top, just, just click the play button on it. Prayers up. Boys, we're going to Mars. That will open up the door. And we can arrive at the rear exit. Oh, uh -huh. ha ha. Right, so after all this bit, what we're going to do next is enter the sleeping quarters. Again, that'll all be on your local map. So just exit, uh, enter the sleeping quarters. And then what you're going to do is speak with the Garrett on the left-hand side. He's up and above on the left-hand side, so make sure to speak to this Garrett. And what we're going to do is actually record the snippet, starting with, I've been doing the same stuff as always. So again, don't spam the A button, just go through it nice and carefully. Until he says, I've been doing the same stuff as always, smiling like an absolute creep bag. So it will be coming. It will be coming. And it is right about here. So I've been doing the same stuff as always, ripping on that bong like it's my job. Again, hover over it, press the A button, and that will say that it has been recorded. And just smash through all the dialogue, get rid of this bit. But we are getting another missable achievement here. Uh, just after we speak to... Uh, creepy wooden toy. So, there is a hot spot on the right-hand side called Shirts. So, just on the right-hand side, just to the right of where that other female Garrett is sitting right there. Click on it. We're going to select Put on Shirt, and that will unlock us, the, unlock us the Garrett Drip achievement, because we don't even get clean shirts, which is nice. <laughs> Not nice. 
And there we go. The deliciousness of a rare achievement unlocks and we can crack on. So next up, we're going to, we're going to enter Service Corridor 1A from the rear exit. So you'll have to go to the rear exit first. Like I said, rear exit first. So we need to go, basically go back on ourselves now. So to the sleeping quarters, then to the rear exit. And then we can, from here, we can go to Service Corridor 1A. And we are going to do some more recordings. So speak to the gamer, Garrett, right here. And the snippet that we need is starting with the new guys get stuck doing stupid shit. Stupid shit, you son of a shit. So, uh, I, again, I just always choose the top option. And then eventually he's going to say the new guys get stuck doing the stupid schnoz. <laughs> And here it is. So make sure to hover over it. Don't press the A button too many times. And then we can press the record button on it. Now, that is that next part done. So after this bit and we're all good, now we're going to continue on to Service Corridor 1B, which again uh, should just be directly in front of us. Then we're going to go to the right and go to Service Corridor 1C. Uh, nope, that's a lady and that is a door. So we're going to go to Service Corridor 1C on the right-hand side. We're going to speak with the Garrett, which is just chilling on the right-hand side. And we're going to get another recording snippet. So another recording snippet eventually, and it's going to start with the new Garrett who guards the cathedral. So the new Garrett that guards the cathedral. We're going to record that one. And when you've done that one then, next we are going to speak to the Garrett on the left. Sa same same corridor, we're going to speak to the guy on the left. We're going to keep speaking to him until poor poor suggests getting a little, um, a little something something to put his mind at ease. Uh, so what that will do is actually unlock Lafreniere Park as a destination on the world map. So if it's not on the world map just yet, keep speaking to the guy on the left until poor poor's like, Hey man, I know a little something, something to get you a little something, something. You want something, something? Otherwise, if it's unlocked, we can now go ahead and head there. So go back into your fake taxi. We're going to be grabbing a couple of achievements as well. Um, one is missable and one is very missable. And it involves Crackhead Santa from Act 1. So head to Lanfrierberg. Go to the bathroom. So head to the bathroom. And then obviously nip inside. Uh, nom, 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 nom. Um, interact here with the stall. That is where we're going to get some drugs. Now, you can actually go to St. Somewheres, uh, get some drugs off the dealer. Belle inside, but she's we haven't got the funds. Plus, she will refuse anyway, so there's no point. So this is why you head to the stall uh, to grab the old Psyche Medelicas. And before we leave, make sure to interact with the urinal for an unskippable cutscene. And god damn, does it take a while. I'm surprised Duke Nukem doesn't come in and try to drink his piss. Anyway, this is going to get the Paw Paw Sprinkle achievement. And you just got to keep watching. Nothing we can do. You can compare wiener sizes if you want to make yourself feel better. But other than that, not a lot else. God damn, dude, he can take a whiz. Right, so next up, we need to get our fixed taxi phone number out. Hello, John, Papa John's. Come pick me up, please. Now we need to go visit Crackhead Santa again, so go back downtown town. Now remember, you had to, if you gave Santa a dollar earlier in act one, this is available. If you didn't and you missed it somehow, unfortunately, you'll have to play through the entire entirety of the game again and go through almost two hours. So head of the French quarters, what you're going to do is uh, just speak with Santa again while Popo here is in our party. 
and he will reciprocate our generosity. Um, impressively, I'm surprised he remembers us, but he actually gives us some good stuff for free, and it will also get us the Ho 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 achievement. Yes, that's it. Uh, for whatever particular reason, then the achievement took like for, like a couple of minutes to unlock. Uh, so just keep waiting here until the achievement unlocks. And then when it finally does, remember you can only get this if you gave Santa the dollar earlier. If it doesn't unlock, uh, you may have probably misgiven him the dollar. Or you'll just uh, just quit out and go back in. And it'll basically auto-save right just before you talk to Sandy Claus. So after we've done that, then we can head back to the promenade mall. Promenade mall, sorry. Mm, sorry. <laughs> yeah. So back to the promenade mall and enter via the loading bay. So if we enter once again back through the loading bay, or the drainage canal first, sorry, and then head to the loading bay, there we go. We're basically heading all the way back to uh, service corridor 1C. Um, now we need to give the garret on the left any of the drugs that we have, it doesn't matter which particular one, but don't just spam through the dialogue. I done it the first time and I actually had to reload the auto save. So give him any drug, or you have to actually speak to him to give him the drugs, and uh, that's what we have to do. Uh, but don't spam through the dialogue because we need to record another bit of uh, dialogue right here. And it'll start with, I'll drop a couple of these and nod out. So do not spam through it just yet. And then there it is. So I'll drop a couple of these and nod out during tonight's uh, sermon. Reco make sure to record that one. Again, if somehow you ended up missing it, you'll just have to reload the previous auto save, which will basically start off here and just do it again. Um... Otherwise, what we can do now is head straight in front of us to the H room, West Wing. Uh, West Wing, <laughs> East Wing. Now we're going to speak to the vendor who, well, Flannel Face is gone from, I mean, incredibly. Flannel Face here, with he's got a nice smile. Though. He, he looks like a cute little man. Anyway, he stopped selling wieners and he's now in a cult. Top job. Happy days. So you can get a couple of phone cases off him if you want, but I didn't bother, couldn't be asked for that. So we're going to speak to Big Garrett right here. Big, mean, and disgusting. So all you got to do for this part is just click on the voice memo shortcut and play back any four of the following recordings. It'll either be three or four. For me, I have to show him four of the recordings, and eventually he will bagger off. Um, now, you should the ones you should have stored is the one that John told us was supposed to be fast in. The new guys get stuck doing stupid shit. I've been doing the same stuff as always. I'll drop a couple of these and the new Garrett who guards the cathedral. So you should have at least five recordings. Choose any three or four of those. And that'll be make be enough to uh, get Big Garrett to knob it off forever. Those birds send pieces. Right, so what we need to do now is, if you interact with the keypad, this code is going to be random, by the way. This code will be random for you, but it is in a very easy location. So, what you have to do, go into your phone, go into the Pope app. Now, if you click on all three of the virtual signals, do not spam the A button. Just go uh, through, it, through it carefully until you see a number. Numbers are what we're looking out for. So, for me, it is the number 10. So uh, just chill out. Don't go through it. So there it is. You're unconscious for 10 days. Again, I do believe that this is random for you. So just write it down or keep it in your memory. So the first one, uh, again, for me, was number 10. Click on the second one. And again, very carefully, don't go spamming through the A button. You don't need to do that, no, man. 
You don't need to do that. So for the second one, it's 32. So the number 32. So for me, it'll be 1032. And then, of course, you're going to do that for the same, for the uh, last one. So the right-hand side one, click the A button on it, and you should get a three-digit uh, number. So for me, it was 322. Uh, 822, sorry. Oh, j j Jesus Christ, Carl. Can't even remember. So 822. So once we've got that, add all those together. If you've jotted them down somewhere or you can remember them, then you can interact with the key code or the keypad. For me, again, it was 1032. 822, but whatever it is for you, make sure to type that in, and then we are good to go. So, as you could have probably imagined there, none of the dialogue uh, options actually mattered, uh, but we got this big orb stone or something. So, after this part is all done, um, we can regain control of the party. Now, what we're going to do is return back to Service Corridor 1B. Um, oh, in fact, no, so, sorry, we're going into the Atrium West Wing first, so just get a little, again a little bit ahead of myself. Big whole sermon's going to happen, and then we need to go back into Service Corridor 1B. So we do have another key code thing in which to do. Luckily, this time it's not random. But if you want to know where the numbers are, it's the ones that Paw Paw shouts out. Um, so I have 2,000 blah, 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 and 131. So 131, there we go. So if we go back to Corridor 1B, uh, here it is. Have a look at the utility closet uh, note pad, the lock pad, sorry. And then what we need to do is input the code 2,131. So two. 000 131 after of course we entered the code so there it is 2000131 000 and we are now inside poor paws house or little poor paws room room ah my english is fantastic as always on point as you can probably tell uh, so there we go it's creepy as you literally could imagine he lives in a janitor's closet and it is as creepy as you could imagine so uh, what we need to do, there's somebody, as you can probably tell, who is just trapped inside the cask. So what we need to do is a secret passphrase in order to open it up. But just go ahead and interact with the scroll in the top right corner of the room. 
Um, interact with our stone orb candle thing in the party and then quickly read the writing before it disappears. So as you can see, it does slowly fade away. So if that does happen, just quickly uh, click the stone again and read the writing. And that will come up with some more stuffs. All right, we're that one done. So now we can actually just back out. Now you can actually press the B button. What you have to do is go into your local map to back out. Interact with the painting on the back wall. Uh, there it is. And then we can pray. Ah, pray for me, Jesus. Ah. I don't know what the hell that was supposed to be, but anyway. So now what we can do is actually use the Pop of the app. Oh, the Pop would not like it as cheap as a painting. Uh, but we do need to use the app in order to make a secret image appear. Now you'll just have to wait for a few seconds until Paw Paw's big disgusting face will appear. It's actually very creepy as well. Holy crap holy. Anyway, don't spam through the dialogue. What we have to do is record the snippet. So don't spam through it just yet. There it is. So make sure to record the dialogue snippet. Right, and there we go. So exit the close-up painting, and now we can finally interact with the lock on the cask. When we've done that, we're going to click on the voice memo app shortcut, which again, of course, should be at the bottom, and just play the recording to free the trapped dude inside. Saving lives in all sorts. We are some kind of... We are kicking... We'd be a kick-ass team. It's a shame I'll be dead, dude. Uh, I mean, Catherine. So what we can do now is basically we're going to leave the utility closet. Head all the way to the front entrance. Uh, so just keep going back on yourself. So rear exit. And now what you need to do is go into uh, the sleeping quarters. So you actually need to head into the sleeping quarters. Uh, for, for whatever particular reason. I end up going forward into the service corridor. Oh, in fact, no, I don't. There we go. Uh, so now we can go to the front entrance through the sleeping quarters. Job done. Um, now, we are going to... This is basically the end of Act 2, but this is the absolute last chance to record the Watcher's message in the subdivision for Bruce back... Uh, again, at the subdivision there, before returning to the Super Duck node at the Eagle Wholesale. So, if you haven't recorded the Watcher's message for his son Bruce in the subdivision... Make sure to do that now before we leave. Otherwise, if you have got it and we're all good, we can now just go back into the fake taxi for the final time in this act. Hooray! The final one! Head back to the warehouse. Eagle warehouse. Um, enter the warehouse. Speak with the Super Duck node, which is basically the big giant fat boy eagle. And complete act two. Okay, so the eagle just ate the thing that we just thing. Right, anyway, here we are then. We are back with Mexican Joey from Friends. Um, this is inside Padu P.I. So Padu Pi on Apple Street. Uh, this is apparently he is a private investigator, even though we bought him all the beers and the dirty fries. But anyway, answer Blanc, uh, Le Blanc, however you wish. You will get a new mind map entry here uh, during our conversation with Le Blanc. So this one is unmissable. Again, that one is just for more story stuff, though, so, nay panic.
Alright, so we're going to get another missable achievement right here. Now we've got Catherine's smartphone, but the first thing you're going to do is interact with the face paint kit here on the right hand side. So the face paint kit, all you're going to do is uh, keep clicking on it, and then Joey from Friends, the Mexican Joey here. Sorry, I hope I'm not offending anyone with that, but he does just look like a Mexican Joey. Uh, but just keep interacting with him, and as you can see in our party, he turns into uh, Le Bluggalo. <laughs> turns into one of those like, hey, I'm an insane clown posse guy, and I just scare the hell out of all children ever. Uh, yeah, one of those juggalo and bluggalo things, yeah. So anyway, once that achievement is done, we can head outside, interact with the Garrett outside Padupai. Um, again, <laughs> this hair and this mustache is incredible. Uh, just interact with him, just uh, choose any dialogue options that you want. And we're actually going to get a new uh, missable achievement as well, in just a bit. Right though, so what we're going to do then, um, you can do this in any order, but basically what we need to do is go to the flood, Floodgate Tavern. Before heading inside, what we're going to do is go into Catherine's phone. So make sure this is very important here for the achievement. Uh, so go into the phone before heading in. Go to the um, Case Flicker app, or the Case Picker, sorry, I'll try that one again. Make sure that it is the Merrieri Angels, the Metier Angels. So make sure that you have clicked on that and that the background is the Metieri Angels. So as long as it is the Metieri Angels uh, background, now we can head back into the bar. And now we are going to speak to Gus, old Gustav. Agree to hand the phone over to him and we should get the Metieri -er 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 Angels achievement. So again, if you somehow ended up missing that for whatever particular reason, quit out of the game, go back into it and reload your last auto save. Uh, before ending all this, of course. So, but once that's that, that is done, the achievement will unlock. Eventually it unlocks. See how long it took? I just might as well go make a brew at this point. Oh, there you go. Oh, hi, achievement. Thank you for making me crapple the pantles again. Anyway, once that is done, we can now head back home. And that's the last time we see Gus. So if you were uh, attracted to Gus, I'm sorry. You'll just have to look at my picture from now on. Eh, just joking. Right, so heading back home. We're going back to the hidden office via the attic. So of course, head into the house, into the kitchen, head up into the uh, attic, and then head down the ladder into the hidden office. And once we're here then, what we're going to do is just examine the USB device, which is on the desk. Uh, Million, who is... Uh, well, she's zero right now. She did. Uh, we're going to examine the USB uh, device on the desk, which basically what we will learn, it, it is basically this is the head drive unit, which Duck, if you've been paying attention, Duck mentioned a little earlier on. Otherwise, we can interact with the signal jammer on the right-hand side of the desk. And again, you can choose whatever option you want uh, to basically just shut it off. But the, this is where the signal jammer is. Use any dialogue option to turn it off. Next, we're going to interact with the USB device thing again, or the head drive unit, once again. And that'll get everything all good. Wi-Fi detected. Huh, not for a million. Nope. Like I said, she's gone from millions to thousands to hundreds to zero. Right, so, um, once we've interacted with them, what we're going to do is, uh, to connect it up, we need to open up the Head Drive Client app on our phone. So the head, so it's the top left-hand corner on the Head Drive Client app. Uh, select Catherine Mediel, uh, who should be the only Head Drive connection available. And just exhaust all of the dialogue options. So make sure to exhaust every single dialogue option. Oh my god, it's my dead mom! Creepy.
Right, so once we've cried and uh, collectively crapped our pants at the same time, speaking to the ghost of our mother, um, next we are going to return to the Aussie slash New Zealand, because I, I only say that, I know they're not the same, so don't kick me for that, that's like people saying Wales is in England and everything. Uh, return to Dimes, and now we're going to speak to any of the Garrets outside Duck's house and prepare for another fight. All we can do is literally just select a uh, Mexican Joey as our fighter, Land a couple of hits in his ring QTE challenge. So that is what, uh, again, K will always be the glyphs. And uh, Mexican Joey will be the ring quick time event challenge. And uh, providing you can end this um, in one fight or in one fell swoop. If not, just it, it's an easy fight anyway. So fight these guys and then all good. Again, I'm not trying to offend any Australians and New Zealands. I just forget which part. Whoever says Danes, it sounds more like Dines. All right, Dines. Yeah. Or am I just being stupid completely and you both hate me now? Probably that one. So after that particular little fight is over, what we can do is now enter the house and we are going to make sure to read the note on the desk. Now the reason we're doing that, this is where mind map node whatever 23 out of 23 is. So we should now get the Master of Confusion achievement. So hopefully you've been going along fine and you've been um, following the guide lovely. This should now get you 23 out of 23. And that's for reading the note on the desk and for getting the coordinate letter. So that we need the letter anyway. And eventually the achievement should unlock. Again, it may take around 20 or 30 seconds or so. I did edit it down a little bit. But that is the Mastery Confusion for unlocking all nodes in the minimap. So once we've got that one, we can now head to the library. We are basically just going to more or less exhaust all the dialogue with Duck, who's looking... <laughs> well, Duck is looking more like... Um, what's a dead duck? I suppose just like a dead duck. Um, but you'll get a couple of mind map entries. Of course, any mind map entries that you unlock will now be, of course, just for story purposes. So exhaust all the dialogue that you want to. Fair play to a man who can barely breathe and who's basically dying. He talked a lot right there. A lot. So interact with the head drive uh, right on the desk just to the left of the computer. And then what we can do is use the head drive client app on our phone again. So exactly what we just done with Gaffin Madiel. Use that one, but of course we're going to choose uh, Mr. Richard. Clayton Richard connection in the menu. And we can now access Lake Pont Chartrain from the world map. Pont Chartrain. Just sounds like just a little Welsh village, that one. Welcome to Pontchart Train. It's just a lake and you can't do anything. All right. So after that one, we're all good. Um, so what we are going to do, we, we have to head outside. We can't actually use the world map inside. We have to go outside for whatever particular reason. So interact with the world map and of course head to Long Lake Pontchart Train. For another couple of missable achievements, plus to do something here to get missable achievements later on as well. That's why I'm doing this guy, because some of these achievements can be slightly confusing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Right, so head to the fisherman camp then, or the fishing camp. We're going to speak with the fisherman at the camp. Again, smash through any dialogue options that you want. The fisherman will be the only guy here, just on the right hand side. Uh, so just speak to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Now this is another le important letter that we have to interact with. So have a look at the notice board just to the right of Fisherman. And the Garrett letter, after this bit of dialogue, is in the bottom left corner. As you can see, it's in gold. It says Garrett. It's fairly obvious where it is, but make sure that you interact with and read that Garrett letter before heading out of the notice board. And so once you've done that then, what we are going to do, uh, basically that's just another mind map entry, but it is important as well. So what we're going to do is open the smartphone menu, use the Pope app on the notice menu board, and what you'll be able to see uh, when we go left and right is four flashing dot. well, it's a, in a particular order, okay? So this is the start of the puzzle. So you've got the top right corner, which is flashing, the bottom right one, which is sort of slowly blinking, the bottom left one, which is sort of flashing on and off, and there should be a fourth one in the middle, which is still. So we basically have to go and find four bits of sonar and connect it with that notice board. I'll obviously tell you exactly um, which one it is anyway. And to actually finish the puzzle is very easy anyway. And I will explain why when we get there. So underwater portals, that's what they're called actually. For now, what we're going to do, we're going to head, there's two units we can follow or go to. What we're going to do is go to unit B. Very important here, just knock the door once. So do not, basically, the clown is going to tell you to keep knocking it rapidly. Do not interact with it rapidly. All you're going to do is knock it once. The clown is going to be like, hey man, I got McDonald's to get to, bro. Stop doing that. But we're going to do this five times. Again, knocking the door just once. Uh, five times. This is unit B, by the way. So, sorry, that's what I was trying to say. You can go to unit A or unit B. But it's highly important for a couple of achievements to go for unit B. And again, like I said, uh, just keep knocking the door once. You should only have to do this five times until the achievement unlocks. Again, it's <laughs> going to be another 20 to 30 seconds before it finally decides to come on. <laughs> All right, there we go. Sorry. Sorry, sounded like I was about to crack pants then, didn't it? But uh, now we can knock the crap out of this door. And that is all good. So just keep knocking until you're basically let in. Right, so we're going to get another achievement here then, um, and this is for basically, um, we've, we've met a few <laughs> rather intriguing guests and a familiar face. Basically, they're going to hand us the boat key um, once they finally acknowledge us and let us in, and we will get another achievement. This one is pretty much unmissable. You can miss it if you just went to Unit A, but if you've gone to Unit B, this uh, achievement called Meter is um, it's unmissable because they're going to give us the Meter anyway. But we are actually going to get another two achievements related to this meter a bit later on. So that's why it was highly important that we went to unit B and not A. The guys in unit A are suck. Okay. All right, so if you want a couple of mind map entries again, just to, again, progress the story, if you've been following it, what you can do is just speak with... Uh, in fact, we'll wait for the achievement there to unlock. So meter should unlock for you now. But if you want to, of course, we've got uh, Dallas on their side as well. Uh... But if you want to, you can speak with anyone and ask what's this all about, how so, and who was your colleague, just to get a couple of client mind map entries for story progression. If you don't care about that, we can actually just head back and interact with the boat twice to start the engine and get going. <laughs> Right.
Remember then to read the Garrett letter on the notice board if you haven't already just before setting out. Like I said, if you're all good and you've read it, we can now head out. And uh, this time there is a lot of boating that we have to do. It's not so bad and thank God they didn't put the achievement for not hitting any of the walls on this section because this would have been more of a son of a bitch. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry to say. Uh, but no, you can hit the walls, whatever you want in this boating section, it's all good. So let's just uh, stop talking to your man. Right, and we are actually going to get a missable achievement before we start heading off. So we're going to start here at the fishing camp. What we're going to do after Le Clown... <laughs> <laughs> Le Clown, Le, uh, Ronald McDonald stops talking. What we're going to do, uh, so basically we can't actually get to the ghost bayous just yet. We have to interact with uh, all four of these portals. But the first thing we're going to do then is just turn to immediately around, head to the right, and as soon as you see it blinking, press the X button to dive in. Uh, just spam through the dialogue, and then you no, we'll normally get two options. One is just for getting back to the boat. Um, and the other is for having a sift through. This time we managed to grab the Mardi Gras beads. Tidy bag. So what we have to do to get the Carnival Pig achievement, what we can do once we've grabbed the beads. Um, now, if you press the Y button, you can actually zoom the map out uh, just to see where you are going. Um, but it's kind of hard to tell you sort of where to go. So what we're going to do is head up. Now at this intersection, we're going to turn immediately right. So you won't have that flashing red portal on it just yet. That's because I was uh, making silly errors. But at the intersection, you just needed to turn right. Uh, just keep going again. It doesn't matter if you crash into walls. It doesn't matter if it's too dark and that would just go in. There's no uh, health H HP bar or anything like that. So you will be fine. Just fine. Fine. Just fine. Yep. Just keep on going. And then eventually it's going to open up. And the, the eyeball right there shall appear. Head towards the eyeball. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, hello, baby. What's going on? I love the way Le Clown says bruh about everything as well. Anyway, throw in the uh, Mardi Gras beads and that will get us the Carnival Pig achievement. Job done. Carnival Pig. Eventually, it will unlock again after about 20, 30, 40 seconds or so. There it is. Man, I love a rare achievement. Probably one of the best things that Xbox have done, to be honest, is put that in. Uh, just for literally... Uh, it's just beautiful, isn't it? So now, what we got to do then is go and find those four portals. Um, yeah, find the four portals. We have to, now remember on the notice board, we have to do it in that particular order. But there is also an easy way just to um, uh, complete it, and I will show you exactly what that is. Now, I've basically gone, th what I've done is I, I've gone through it to show you exactly where the portals are. So for one, when we head left, it's going to be right in the middle of this intersection. So press X to dive down. Uh, just spam through all the dialogue here. Now, what you need to do is keep flipping the switch. Now, it's going to keep going red until it goes green. If you're colorblind, a bit, or even a bit colorblind like I was, have a look at the flashing thing uh, at the bottom. Now, as long as it's got all, um, like, what look like stones or little circles or something around it, that's when you know that you've done it correctly, okay? So now, from here, what we're going to do is head down. Basically, back to the sh uh, fishing camp start. And we're going to go to the right of the fishing camp. Head through here. Again, on your screen, if you're doing this for the first time, you won't actually see the portal flashing. I've gone through it first, just to let you know exactly where they are. So when we get to this bit then, press the X button once again. And again, what you need to do is you keep flipping the switch or whatever the top option is until it goes green. Or, again, if you're colorblind, like I said, or you have trouble with it, you see all the like floating stones or something around it. That is the easiest way that I uh, found out to do. Um, apparently, I'm going to take you through it again. So just keep on going through. Again, if you wanted to do this puzzle the hard way, you would have to remember what kind of flashy flashes they were in the two in the top right and two in the sort of um, other left bit. So what we're going to do, head up. Now, once we've got those two keen and golden as nuggety nuts, obviously head up. From this four-way intersection, we're going to head directly um, so past the portal and go left. So it's sort of the top left. I don't think it makes a difference, actually. Uh, top or bottom left, you're all good. Because you, we need to start heading down anyway, 
and that is where the third portal is. So again, keep flicking through until it's green or until you see the circle stones around it. And then for the final one, what we're going to do then is obviously head up, ignoring the cars, head to the right, so we're basically going back to the four-way intersection, heading up from here, oh, smash, bang, and wallop, uh, head to the right, so what you can actually do is just head up, and I, I went through the smaller way for some reason, but you can actually just head up a little bit more and head to the right, uh, so you'll have a bit more room to manoeuvre in, uh, so there we go. Um, and then we can just keep heading right there. So I did just make a bit of a pig's ear out of that one. Keep heading right, and that is where the fourth and final one is. So again, uh, just keep flipping the switch or whatever it is until the green circles are around the main circle-y circle. Right, so once we've done that, another Ghost Bayou is available. What we have to do is we need to press the... There's basically two red X's, which you probably would have seen earlier. There are two red X's that we need to get to. So if you are stuck uh, for whatever particular reason, trying to navigate your way through the Ghost Bayou here, as we keep, Bayou here as we keep heading up, just keep pressing the white button to zoom out and just, you know, keep on going from there. Otherwise, what we could just do, uh, we're into the middle... What we're doing is heading slightly left from here. We're going to go up at this part. To be honest, I kind of guessed where I was going and uh, somehow managed to make it. Uh, keep heading up. And again, if, obviously, if you want some more light, just take your time. Head to the right. And then we're sort of going uh, to the right up. Press the X button here, actually. Make sure that you press the X button. This is very important uh, because we need John's head. Uh, so John's head, which is just chilling in the water, we get John's head, we also get some eyeballs as well, just for good measure. Damn, they really did not like John, did they, from, from that? So, yeah, make sure then, just before we start heading up, up and to the right, and again, if you're obviously stuck of where to go, just, um, take a note of where I am on the environment and on the map, and this is where we are good to go. So make sure then that you press the X button, you've got John's head, and we can carry on, so... Up, right, now we're going to start heading to the uh, right again. That looked like an edit, but that was actually me just crashing twice. And just keep on heading, uh, we're getting uh, sort of right down. So right down, 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 down. And head to the left, don't head into the duck blinds just yet. Uh, we are actually going to just be heading to the left. And what we're going to do then is end up in the question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Now, this is very, very important, might I add. So what we have to do here, do not give the eyes to the bird just yet. Do not give the eyes to the bird just yet. When we arrive here at Eagle's Pond, uh, make sure that we use the meter on the large eyeless eagle. So we have to use the meter First on the eagle. So this is very, very important. Again, if you want, make a manual save just in case you mess up. So make sure that you've uh, got the meter and it's taken a little, and you can tell when it's taken a meter reading just by the uh, noises. Next up, now we can give him the eyes and it'll go, I mean, to be honest, it'll go, <laughs> it's kind of going to go batshit insane. Arr! Yeah, like that. Damn, bro, that's some powerful eyes. And that gives us a our little orb stone friend back. But do not leave just yet, so you uh, had to make sure to have read, given the meter to the eagle before, then given him the eyes. Next, we have to use the meter on the large entity eagle thing after as well. So using the meter before and after the eagle will get us two achievements when we head back to the scientist bras. <laughs> So once we've got that, and like I said, you've taken one before and after, what we can do is press Y on the map now, and uh, press up and down on the D-pad, or up or down, 
eventually there we go so you need to press down on the d-pad to go to the bottom left hand red arrow which of course will be the fishing camp for some reason it took me honestly for ages to figure it figure this one out i was pressing every other button apart from up and down on the d-pad so i was kind of pissed off when i figured that one out <laughs> so heading back to the fishing camp anyway go back into unit b speaking to the researcher and return the meter that they gave us earlier now once we've done that uh, or you can just give them the meter straight away whatever it's all good but as long as you recorded a set of readings before and after using the eyes on the big eagle thing you we will unlock the uh, two achievements called network trouble and terminal network meltdown so that will be two achievements done and pff, now we are good beautiful beautiful they actually kick us out then well fudge you get we're screw guys, I'm going home. Anyway, back to the lake then. Again, you can press the right bumper there to get back to the lake quickly as you can. We're going to fast travel all the way then back to Duck's Blind. Or the sort of Eagle's Pond. So go back to Eagle's Pond. Go back onto the lake. And now what we're actually going to do is go to Duck's Blind. Which of course is just literally up to the right and slightly down. Now, what we're going to do here then is speak to L Baldings, the two on the left. Don't, you, uh, don't speak to the guy on the right, he's pointless. So what are you going to do then? Speak to the Garrett's standing guard here on the left. Um, all you're going to do is speak to him. Dialogue again, dialogue choices do not... Jesus Christ, that is a head and a half. Dialogue choices do not matter. So you can leave if you want to. Uh, but then after this, we're going to click on the orbs portrait. So the, the, the floating orb that we've got in the party menu. Watch the scenes. Click on the orb again, and then the garrets will let us pass. Basically, we're just going to click on the orb twice, and then we can finally get true. Uh, cheers for that, you bloody bald weirdos. Oh, I'm <laughs> just talking about myself. Right, so we're going to get another missable achievement here. And you can only get this if you recruited the monkey. So what you're going to do is start heading sort of down. It's kind of linear. But right here, when you see it, it's unmissable. But if you press the X button, right here, where I am on the map right now, you will get the wet monkey. And again, uh, and you will get the wet monkey achievement. But you could only get this if you recruited Monkey way back at the beginning in Act 1. If you missed it, you won't get this achievement and you'll actually have to replay the whole thing again up to this point. Which is basically the entirety of the game, I'm so sorry. But once you've got that then, that is the Sonar Hotspot. And we can now finally continue east to the right and head in to John's Pond. Keith's Corner. Keith, you got some beef in your teeth, mate. Right, so a few missable achievements again, and one very important thing that we have to do to get another achievement later on. Knows how to confuse the crap out of you with that one, don't they? So, what we can do, you can speak to NPCs here if you want, but we're not going to bother. What we're actually going to do is go to the staging area, and then we're going to go to the shipping container. So just head to the shipping container, and we are going to basically get Bruce to get the hell out of here. So we're going to get two achievements. Bruce is inside the shipping container, so I do make a... A manual save just in case to be honest i thought that i had to um do the one uh, basically to get bruce going i thought i had to do one achievement reload the save and then go back so i'd actually forgotten about that part so we need to do uh, speak with bruce then very quickly when he opens up the shipping container go into your inventory 
go into your inventory, grab the wet monkey, and give it to Bruce. So we're going to do that very quick. You can either do that, or you can use the recording, by the way. But I just grab the wet monkey, give it to Bruce as quick as he can, and you will get two achievements here. One called Bye Bye Brucey Achievement, and one called Mr. Monkey Man. Um, so, of course, obviously, if you use the wet monkey on Bruce, you'll just knock out the two achievements in one. If you use the recorded dialogue from his dad, you'll actually have to reload the save and get the wet Mr. Monkey Man achievement as well. But giving him the, the Mr. Monkey Man basically gives us the Bye Bye Brucey achievement. Um, and he actually goes now. So he goes, he disappears, which is what exactly what we need for an achievement at the very end of the game. So as long as Bruce has disappeared from here, you are golden as hell. If he remains, um, just sh um, give him the dialogue from his dad, the recording from his dad, and he will disappear. As long as Brucey's gone, and you've got the two achievements there, bye bye Brucey and Mr. Monkey Man, we are good to go. So now what we can do is head right here into the staging area, and we need to speak to Chuck, this guy on the right hand side. So into the fishing camp, we are, speak to Chuck, and then what you need to do, by the way, this is an extremely, very, very missable achievement. Uh, we have to do this before we give John's head to the false pawpaw. So give John's head to Chuck right now, and he's going to be fuming and angry. But that's going to give us the Ditch Man Dead achievement. So the Ditch Man Dead achievement will be yours after giving him John's head. You'll still keep it in your inventory, so you don't have to make a manual save. Uh, but this is um, in the fishing camp. Sorry, I, I did do that part quite quickly there. So I do apologize that wasn't explaining. I was still trying to explain about the Brucey stuff before getting here. But you have to make sure to do this before giving it to the fake uh, in the shipping container. So the fake pawpaw here is on the left-hand side. Um, what, obviously in the same shipping container area where Brucey just was. So now what we can do is speak to the garret here on the left-hand side. You will get another my map entry called Pawpaw, which uh, if you choose the option, we're looking for Blake, followed by I thought Ditchman was the anointed, if you were after some story stuff. Otherwise, what you can say is, what kind of Garrett are you? And then we can just use the John head on the Garrett at the shipping container here to unlock the like Pawpaw, like Pawpaw, like the Welsh hunter, very Pawpaw. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I have no money left. Anyway, once that achievement is unlocked, and he's very happy, he's going to start yammering on about some crap. Uh, the achievement will unlock here, by the way, at some point. Come in! Come in! All right, there it is. Job done. Okay, what we need to do is do some recording now. So, I am the one they call Ditchman. I am the only one they call Ditchman. Make sure it's the top option there. I am the one they call Ditchman. Make sure that that snippet is recorded. And then that should be all good. So once we've recorded that snippet again, I am the one they call Ditchman. Head back to the fishing camp. Oh, in fact, god damn it, son of a... I forgot to delete it. So yeah, if your memory's full, you'll have to delete it. Speak to the Garrett again. And again, make sure to record the option. I am the one they call Ditchman. Right, so when we finally got that, now we can head back, go to the fishing camp, and we're going to speak with Chuck again. And this time, what we're going to do is use the voice memo shortcut to play back the I am the one that we call Ditchman. Na 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 Ditchman. Ditchman. Watch the incredible scenes and then head back to the shipping container. <laughs> Damn, bro, that is some shooty, shooty stuff. So, uh, thank you, LeClown, for that one. So, what we're going to do then is head into, once again, back to the shipping container. Again, you can speak to anyone you want, but what we're actually going to do is just interact with Gooch, who is pretty much now, he is pretty dead on the floor, and we're just going to obtain the key card off him. So, we've got the key card. We are now going to be coming up to pretty much the end of the game. This is the last area that we're going to be coming up to. So... Once we've got the key card from Gooch Balls, Gucci Drizzle Drizzle Balls, head to the staging area and go 
straight in front of us to the aptly named entrance. Very, very original there. And so what we're going to do, we're going to use the key card on the scanner to unlock the Ark's door. So if you want to make a save here, we're not going to be able to save for a, quite a while now. So um, make sure to make a save if you prefer, if you so wish. The auto saves in this game are pretty handy anyway. They're all good. So use the, um, uh, the key card on the scanner. That'll unlock the door. So what's basically going to happen now, all we're going to do for the time being, we're going to keep going forward up a ladder and we're going to fight several waves of Garrett's. Now, th th again, the easiest, th it's going to take a couple of minutes, but the easiest thing to do is resort to using the orb. So basically, if you click on the orb first, that is going to take a whole load of health off everyone and then just switch to LeBlanc and complete LeBlanc's quick time event challenge while the orb is on cooldown. And then just keep clicking the orb whenever possible. So orb LeBlanc, orb LeBlanc. If you need to heal, remember, before you hit an enemy, make sure to heal in the top right-hand corner. And that is the easiest way to get through these several waves of Garrett's. But you're going to be doing this for the next four or five minutes or so. So enjoy. Enjoy, I meant, because I'm a man. A man sound like this. Uh.
Right, once you've killed the big bird and you've put him inside your KFC box, well, that's it. We are now literally at the final, final area of the game. So, what we're going to want to do first, before heading through the centre, since we have no one in our party now, um, oh, by the way, yeah, you had to play as K, I'm sure you would have got that, but it's still easy enough. Anyway, so what we're going to do is actually head up into Shepherd's Watch, uh, through your local map, so go up to Shepherd's Watch, head for the lookout here, and we're going to speak to Mexican Joey. Uh, again, dialogue options don't matter, so just choose Joey there, who is, well, not looking good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, just so just go through all the dialogue options, again, does not matter. Once this is done then, we can now head back down and now we're going to go through the central column or the central centre right there. We're going to be getting another missable achievement here, the Willy Make It Out Live achievement. So if you want to, I believe if we head through to the mezzanine, we are now able to save, but probably not, so don't worry about that. So interact with the right door, but you have to choose the specific dialogue option. So do not spam the A button. Do not spam the A button here. You need to choose specific dialogue options. So, uh, so go through this bit. Now what we need to choose is continue down hallway. So continue down the hallway. And then the next scene, when we're still in our bedroom, we're going to select P. Roo's... <laughs> I thought it was Pursue Books, but it's P. Roo... Peru... Peru's Books. Peru's Books. Uh, anyway. So right here then, on to the next one, you're going to choose Peru's Books. Peru's. Peru's. I don't even know what that word is. I've literally never heard of that word. Am I, am I being stupid? Anyway, then, will you make it out alive? And that is how you get the will you make it out alive achievement. Job done. Right, so again, for the next sort of minute or two, the achievement will unlock eventually. But ding there it is. So simply for the next part, all you got to do is just exhaust all the dialogue options in each section of the house before moving on to the next. So you just have to exhaust every dialogue options, then go to the next part of the house, exhaust all the dialogue options, go to the next part, and keep going until we return to the mezzanine. Mezzanine. Mezza 10. Oh boy, don't you just love those people? You know the ones that if you've been to Tenerife, they've been to 11 Arif. Do you know what I mean? If you've been up to space, they've been up to space twice. Yeah, yeah. Flipping douchebags. So now, if you want to, you can actually save the game. It's, there's pretty much no particular reason. We've just got a tiny little bit left to do. Uh, we're just going to go through the left-hand side mezzanine door. Mezza I, I'm pretty sure it's mezzanine, but anyway. Whatever it is. Um, so we are going to the left one, as I said. 
Uh, we're going to continue down the only available path, which is obviously the office from earlier on. We're just going to interact with uh, Mr. St. Clair woman. Probably her ghost now, since she did, you know. Bang, bang. Bang, bang, Bart. Uh, so speak with her, and then we're pretty much all good. Just choose any dialogue options that you prefer. And then we can now go back. So after all this is done, we can actually go back to the mezzanine, and the center column will be open. Right then, so, very important, if Bruce um, is still working with the Garrett and you didn't make him go away, unfortunately you will be unable to get this final achievement called Family Reunion. But, if Bruce is, were, is no longer working with the Garrett, if you've been following the guide, it should be exactly the same. Because we're into the final room, and who should we have? This weird poor poor little dude. Ah, uh, okay, dude, seriously off his head. And there's our brother! Bruh! If you mysteriously disappeared, you haven't been trapped there for five years, are you? Jesus Christ. Anyway, we just got knocked in the knob. And there is our dead mother. And that is one hell of a corpse, by the way. Oh, boy. So, yes. Uh, that's all it is. So, we... Um, I just wanted to show you who that was right there. So, we can interact with the chair. We're going to say yes, which would be the first dialogue option anyway. But, again, as long as Bruce... Again, as long as you've been following the guide and Bruce is not working with the Garrett and he disappeared home... Um, poor Paul here will be forced to leave the area, and that will be our chance to interact with uh, Deadness and Blakeness. And now he's all like, uh, Man, I know you're supposed to be some evil genius crackhead or something, but you could have at least brushed your teeth, do you know what I mean? Anyway, so off he knobs. Now is our chance. What we need to do is just interact here with um, our beloved smother, mother, and Blake. Sorry that I ever that we ever shouted. I'm sorry that I ever pissed you off, Blake. Uh, and we'll give it a year until we can start pissing each other off again. All right. So after that, too, then. So you should have both of your NPCs. Bruce should be gone. And now what we can do is leave the altar, head all the way back to the entrance of the Shepherd's Watch again using the local map. Uh, apparently, the orbs coming with us, or is it, are you staying? What are you doing? I mean, if you got power, you could alive my mum if you want. I could. I could. Could do with my mum being alive, to be fair. Um, no, well, screw you, Orb. Right, head back to the entrance. We are going to head again, use it on your local um, map, go to the Shepherd's Watch, uh, go up here to the lookout, and then right in the middle of the screen, as you can see, will be the dive option. So, again, if you didn't speak with LeBlanc, speak with him already. Click on the diving hotspot, and that is all she murder she wrote. And you lot have a happy life. Finally. Eventually. God damn. What a story. What a story, though. Off you flop. And let's just assume that you sort of didn't crack your head on any rocks. Let's just assume that you, you jumped in. Um, and you're all good. Nobody came after you. And you lived happily ever after. Uh, apparently not with your dad either. Because your dad apparently is dead as well. But, you know, you both are alive. So that's all good. So you should have got the family reunion achievement. Uh, once the credit scenes and cracks on right here, the final achievement there called Congrats with the Sad Emoji Face will unlock, and that should now be 35 out of 35. So, there we go, then, guys and gals. So, that is Norco. Please tell me what you thought of the game, because I thought it was absolutely fantastic, and I'm very, very glad that they brought it onto consoles. So, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I do, like I said, I hope you enjoyed the game, and the guide helped as well. If you did, of course, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as usual. Big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys and gals are legends. And, well, I'm going to get over that one. I'm going to go take a nap. I'll see you in the next Game Pass game, gals. Big uh, guys, gals, kids, kids, Game Pass. Game Pass game, guys and gals. That's what I was after. Big, big, the biggest of love to you, my big homies and homesses.